here on on TikTok. Only good vibes only. All right, so welcome to the show. Uh, we're streaming here live on YouTube, live on TikTok. This is going to be uploaded to YouTube later. And I have Dawn Manuelito back on the show. She joined me last weekend for the first time. I, I had her go live for one of my TikToks, just completely off the cuff. She joined a live and then I added her. And then we did an official live event a week ago today. And we decided that we would come back and we would do this again, right? Wellness Sunday, focus on our wellness today. And today we're going to talk a lot about uh, the wellness will and the six pillars of wellness. And before uh, we get too far into the show, uh, we're going to do a quick introduction here. Uh, Dawn, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. But what I'd like you to do is also talk a little bit about how people can reach out to you right, right off the bat. So that way we um, make sure that our listeners can get in contact with you and talk a little bit about your business as well. So I'm going to let you go whenever, whenever you're ready here. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Don. Hi, everyone. Dagot is Don Manuelito Conce. Hello, everyone. Greetings to you all. I am Don Manuelito of Manuelito Health and Wellness Systems, the CEO and founder. I am a health and wellness coach that teaches healthy living from the inside out. Uh, half Diné and half San Cross Apache in there from the Diné Nation. So that's a little bit about me. All right. And you have your own business. Can you tell us a little bit about your business and when you got started and some of the new products that you have launched recently? Yes, absolutely. I am the owner of Manuelito Health and Wellness Systems. That's my business. You can find me at dawnmanuelito.com. And um, I actually started this company in 2019, March, actually. So this is my five-year anniversary this month. It's an anniversary month. So super excited, everybody. Thank you um, for uh, just sharing space with me here and allowing me to help you along your health and wellness journey. I teach a lot of um, gut health, healthy living from the inside out, and what we are going to talk about tonight, the wellness wheel and the six pillars of wellness. And I teach our Native Indigenous communities a various rainbow of different spaces in the wellness um, in the wellness space. I, it's not just about fitness. It's not just about nutrition. It's really about grab it, getting the information and education and applying it to our everyday lives. You know, I feel like um, Western medicine, sometimes it's, it's tough when, you know, you go see a doctor and it's not, it's not relatable sometimes. And as the indigenous people, you know, we have our holistic health and teachings and um, the way we, we understand wellness to in our, in our space. Yeah. You know, um, I, I like what you had to say about Western medicine you know, it's very much a um, a um, industry driven by pharmaceuticals, by profit, right? There's this big profit motive, and it really, I think, pushes health and wellness to the back. And I think um, if you look at indigenous health and wellness, and if you look at our communities prior to colonialism, uh, we were probably some of the healthiest people in the world. And maybe you can kind of explain to our listeners maybe some of the differences between, say, Western medicine, Western health, um, health and wellness, as you see it, and the indigenous point of view that that you're coming from. Well, I grew up, um, and I was privileged of growing up on both of my nations, um, both the Diné Nation and the San Carlos Apache Nations. And growing up, I was raised with my grandparents who were very traditional, and my parents as well. And we are very active in the learnings and teachings of our upbringings and from medicines, natural medicines, foods, you know. So those are our real medicines as we understand it, you know, back then. But Western medicine comes in and in order to heal or fix something, um, you know, we, we get told to go to the doctor, right? We're, we're told to go to the doctor that, you know, they have the answers. And we, I feel like more so these days is that we've become dependent on that. 
and they don't really have all the answers. There is no set cure for anything. And they will tell you that disclaimer, you know, I even I have to say, you know, uh, a disclaimer, these are not the end all answer to, you know, medicine. But culturally and traditionally as Native Indigenous people, we know what our medicines did for us because how long ago did we survive before Western medicine even came here? Western medicine was just very recent, right? Um, That's right. Be because 500 years ago is when, you know, over 500 years ago is when, when they barely, barely came here to, you know, this, our homelands. But prior to that, we, we survived and our lifestyles were very different. Yeah, no, I think um, along with colonialism and settler colonialism comes all these new types of of problems, historical trauma, right? Um, these social, psychological ruptures that have occurred because of the colonial systems that were brought to us that really kind of took us away from our traditional ways, our traditional forms of medicine, our traditional foods. Can you speak to that just a little bit and talk to us about um, just how Western society has really kind of pushed us away from, from what our ancestors taught us and what was normal to us is no longer always being practiced. And you've been very lucky to be raised up in an environment where you had access to your traditional uh, values, norms, medicines, but a lot of um, communities, unfortunately, because of settler colonialism, um, they don't. Yes. Um, well, you know, it's our way as indigenous and native, native people, you know, so growing up, yes, I was very privileged in having that um, teachings and those values instilled. But when it comes to Western medicine, it's not um, conducive to our upbringing. And the reason and a lot of that was because of the trauma of being taken from our homelands for one and our environment and our food sources and our our medicines right that that when we were returned you know we were limited right so we couldn't you know travel and get those those medicines or even our food sources and then on top of that you know um, the boarding school system you know taking us away from our homelands again and and really just dissecting us from the inside out from our language, from our our mindset and our understanding, you know, and um, how we perceive our our old ways is was wrong. You, you know, we were taught that those things were wrong, and this is the new right way. And it, that's that was the beginning of some of the issues, or all of the issues that we face now. I mean, now like we we see in the comments here, you know the the denutrition was was depleted from our food system because of the trauma right and yes a lot of that language those barriers when we rip the language away that's part of our our indigeneity our identity too and how we relate to food and that's another reason why we're talking about that whole wellness will when we get there yeah well let's just jump on into the wellness will why don't you um well first of all i just let everybody know um I'm not a medical doctor. Neither <laughs> am a, I. I'm not a, a doctor. So we're not giving any uh, medical advice per yes. se, right? Yes. We're, we're basically, we're talking about health and wellness from an indigenous perspective. This is what we're discussing tonight. Obviously, uh, when it comes to prescriptions and whatnot, you have to speak to your, your doctor about the things that you're doing. But uh, we're just, we're speaking more from an indigenous point of view. I just want everybody who's listening to this to, to know that. Um, but yeah, go ahead. I want to go let you. Well, and then let me just give that whole same disclosure. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a registered dietitian. I'm a health and wellness coach, and I have only my understanding and history of. Hi, Bata Loco. How are you? Um, I just have my history of upbringing and my teachings from my culture, and that's what I teach from. So when we talk about the wellness wheel, I really have like um, everyone to understand I teach from a six pillar. There's so many pillars of wellness. Okay. So I choose the six pillars of wellness and there's three tangible and three not tangible. Right. Okay. So the first three I'll start with are your spiritual, mental, and emotional wellness. 
spiritually. I can't see your faith. I don't know what you believe in. I don't know, you know, your, your spiritual beliefs. So that is something that's not tangible. Um, your mental state. I don't know what your thoughts are. I don't know. I can't read your mind. I don't know any of that. And um, your emotional state, unless you react to them, I still, you know, we, we don't know where your emotions are um, and nor can someone do that for me. Now, the other three are the tangible stuff, your physical, um, your nutritional and your financial spaces. And with all of that, I look at it as a relationship with ourselves and starting there. What's our relationship with ourselves in these areas? Yeah. Can you um, kind of uh, expand on that a little bit? What do you mean exactly a relationship with ourselves? I think I know where you're going here, but I want you to, to um, expand a little. Hello, everybody over there, by the way, <laughs> over there. <laughs> I'm just going to point with my lips over here and do a head nod. <laughs> this is interesting. Okay. So, it is interesting. Um, <laughs> so just so everybody knows before we just full disclosure, if you just jumped on TikTok, uh, we are both live on TikTok and we're also live on YouTube. We're streaming this and I'm recording this into my podcast machine. It's going to be uploaded to Spotify, to Apple Podcasts, to Google Podcasts. So we are going to be all over. We're going to be worldwide. This is a live event on TikTok. Uh, good vibes only. Again, we're, we're talking about health and wellness. And any questions that you have, feel free to throw those in the comment section, both on YouTube and on mm -hmm. TikTok as well. But yeah, we're talking about the wellness will, uh, Dawn, myself, again, we are not physicians. Um, I, I do have a PhD. Um, and, you know, one of my areas is environmental sociology, race, culture. Those are kind of my areas. But obviously, the health and wellness uh, environment is something that I'm really fascinated by. And I've been wanting to talk to you about some of these issues. We've been talking a lot over the last couple of weeks. And it's just uh, I think we should have more of these discussions. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'll let you go ahead and talk a little bit about what you mean by exactly, you know, taking care of ourselves and, and thinking about about the individual. Right. Well, I, you know, when I talk about a relationship with yourself, we're always busy giving to others and worried about others. Right. I mean, how many times do you sit there and go, OK, you know, well, what do, what do, what do I like to do or what's my relationship spiritually with myself? What, what, you know, do I have a relationship spiritually? Do I have a relationship mentally? Do I, do I really think about what my thoughts are and where I'm at mentally? What's my mental health like, right? Um, sometimes those are, those can be confusing areas and emotionally, oh, forget it. You know, like who's really emotionally attached anymore? Either it's, either it's overly, you know, we're emotionally overly, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, activated emotionally yeah. or we're not we're, we're not you know and so absolutely um chris the medicine will so this is part of that wholeness wheel of understanding balance within ourselves right and our wellness wheel is where where am i at with my relationship with myself in these areas because when as as native um and uh, Diné people, we always walk that road of hojo and balance and harmony, not only just, you know, with, with the environment and our surrounding spaces, but with ourselves, because at the end of the day, who are we with the most, right? We're with ourselves the most. That's right. Yeah. And somebody had said something about, um, especially moms always taking mm -hmm. care of others instead of taking care of themselves. That's really, Absolutely. I find that to be really interesting because I, I, um, I mean, you see this, I think, um, with a lot of, um, a lot of mothers and women who, you know, are the primary caregivers and, um, often their health and wellness goes ignored. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. even if, and even if you want to throw Western medicine in there, I think there's just like a complete void of understanding of That's health and wellness for moms. Um, that's true. And that's my sister, Crystal. Yeah, you're right. You know, we do, we do tend to kind of put that on the wayside. We're nurturing mothers, um, females, we're nurturing, you know, that's the part that we're gifted with is to nurture our families and our children and, you know, our, our home, 
you know, and I know in our Diné teachings and when what I was, you know, ra being raised is that as a mother, you're you, that's your home. That's the warmth you give. That's the fire you you provide in your home, right? And that's you know, I think we've gone. And then you get into Western society, and it tells you women become now liberated, and you know the feminist movement into mm -hmm. the '60s and '70s, right? And with a lot of other movements going on with, you know, like civil rights and things like that, you know, going on too. So we have a lot of these things where if we don't take the simplicity out of it, though, and just focus on our own well-being in these areas, we can actually move mountains and helping someone else. Because if I if I'm not like if I am not well enough to help my family literally the whole the whole house falls to pieces right so <laughs> think about that you know like moms women we just are like we'll, we'll just hey we'll show up anyone anytime any day you know just to make sure our children are taken care of um you know and it's it's hard it's hard to find the balance you know um, western medicine oh my goodness talk about over prescriptions of anxiety and depression now you know we, we look what about that those medicines that lead to okay well if you find side effects in that let's just take this right the same thing with anything else in, in wellness like your high blood pressure well okay if you take this then you're gonna have you have to take this to combat you know counteract the the drugs yeah and it just feeds into the the profit motive which is so problematic with, with really anything that is centered around wellness anything that's centered around health once you put a profit motive behind it it's just going to be all out of whack mm -hmm. and uh i totally agree i mean you look at you know the united states and we're five percent of the world's population and we consume around 25 to 30 percent of all these uh, mood enhancers um, anti-anxiety um, medications. Obviously, there's something wrong here in, in the dominant culture because people are just loaded up on all these pills that are supposed to make them feel better and make them feel good about themselves. And, and you know, you go back um, not too many generations in, in our communities and we didn't have any of these problems. We didn't have mm -hmm. any of these issues. Um, and, and so I, I think there um there is a big huge void in western medicine and i think this this void could be filled when people ask me about like indigenous life ways and indigenous epistemologies worldviews you know what what is their place in society today because we have all this technology and we have mri machines and x-ray machines and all this different stuff that can help us understand the human body right mm -hmm. but there is that that component to Western medicine that's missing. I think that was built into our systems, like this understanding of the spirit, this understanding of the mind, body, spirit. And maybe you can speak to that where, where um, the wellness will kind of helps us understand that and just taking care of oneself, meaning taking care of one's, one's spirit, right? Mm -hmm. One's spiritual self. What did I just say earlier to um, Dr. B was where the mind where the mind goes, the body will follow. Yes. Whatever you tell the mind, the body will follow. But you also have to understand that when you have your relationship spiritually, it'll tell that mind the spirit of the body, right? So it all has to intertwine and connect together. And um, in our wellness wheel, we, we talk about that balance, right? Who we are in balance and walking in this world in in balance in hojo and understanding that walk and that connection with mother earth we don't float around this world you know we actually are connected to mother earth and acknowledging that right you know and and understanding that okay here's where my wellness wheel starts is right here my mind my body my spirit i say i personally say it starts with the spirit spiritually where is my spirit at and that my mind can clearly see where it's going and then to fill those emotions with that spirit. Right. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. You know, um, you know, if you, and we were, we were discussing this um, off camera before we went live, you know, um, if you tell yourself, Oh, I'm tired. Or you tell yourself, you know, I can't do this. Um, your body will react to that. 
Mm-hmm. They'll react to that. And I, I know um, in some of our, our ceremonies um, uh, that we're, we still practice today, but mm-hmm. a lot of that is building the strength, right? Building up your, your physical endurance, your mental and your spiritual endurance. And I remember, um, uh, cause I did a four year commitment of, of sun dancing and, you know, it's one of our, okay. our big ceremonies. And I remember my sponsor telling me, he used to tell me, you know, you, you have to tell you, you have to tell your body, you can handle this. Mm-hmm. You can't allow your mind to take over, right? In the, in a negative way. Yes. And you can't allow, allow your mind to tell your body, I can't handle this, 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 uh, um, lack of food, lack of water. And if you're not familiar with a lot of our ceremonies, they involve fasting. They involve mm-hmm. also m- a lot of movement as well. And they're really, really tough. But I remember just listening to my sponsor about uh, talking to our bodies and telling mm-hmm. our bodies that, you know, we can persevere. And I remember that was like a game changer for me. It changed everything. And I've always, I've always remembered that whenever I start to tell myself, oh, maybe have a little self-doubt, right? I start to let that that sink into my mind. I always tell my, no, stop, stop. And, and then I start to correct myself. And I think that's just such a powerful tool. And I don't think we realize just how powerful that we are as human beings, that we have mm-hmm. this incredible power inside of us. But sometimes we're not able to unleash it because we allow our mind to take over and maybe those, the self-doubt or the fear or maybe just, you know, just not feeling like we can get whatever we need to get done. And I, I just feel like, you know, for me, you know, training jujitsu and, and doing some of the difficult things. And I know you're a marathon runner. There is a lot of it. Your mind has to be strong. You have to strengthen your mind mm-hmm. and to go along with that. You also have to strengthen your spirit as well. And there is that, that mind body connection that I just think Western medicine can't even begin to understand that. No, I mean, like, you know, I know as a marathon runner, I I haven't always ran marathons. I wasn't always a long distance runner, but it's such a mental discipline and you really have to discipline your mind. And, but there, then again, it goes back to like, you talked about ceremony, right? And fasting and purposes, right? Well, back when I was younger, our, our Apache way and our Diné way, we have sunrise ceremonies for women that are going through the the ceremonies of womanhood and so we're we're transitioning into womanhood and in those ceremonies come sacrifices fasting days of endurance you know um back then i remember in my ceremony and i'm sure you probably remember your ceremonies you know we talked about yoga this is why yoga reminds me of this because on saturday of my ceremony in full buckskin we're doing, you know, so many hours of dancing with no, very little water, but your mind is is in there spiritually. And that's kind of like now that's the travel. When things get hard, I go back to those moments. And I'm like, if I can do it, then I can do this now, you know, and it's really just disciplining our minds into what we're going to believe in ourselves. Because like we, we were talking before is, you know, the minute you say, I don't know if I'm going to, if I were to say, I don't know if I'm going to finish this marathon, I would not have got, especially this last one, because I was injured this last one. So, <laughs> you know, it is really about what we tell our spirit. And yes, Alyssa's right. Um, the spells that we cast on ourselves and just our word, right? Our words. And it, it, it it's the like um, this gentleman over here is to are taught to look outwards and not inwards. But yeah, it, that's true. You know, we, we have to take our spirit because that's where it's at. It's in ourselves and really addressing these things. That's why I say it's a relationship with ourselves is going, okay, let me go back inside and go, okay, what's that relationship like? Even if we are in a negative state, we, we, you know, there are times when we have to dig ourselves out of those spaces of darkness too, right? Um, we have, we have to take ourselves out of that space and go, okay, what am I thinking about? And why am I thinking this way? Right. I love that one too. The four agreements. 
Yeah, I've heard of the four agreements. I can't think of off, off the top of my head, but I've had a lot of people talk about is it it's a book? Is that is that yes. a book mm -hmm. as well? Yeah, mm -hmm. the four agreements. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think there's just so much to that. I, I know that when my when I feel the strongest is when I I feel that sense of hope. I feel that sense of I can persevere through anything. Mm -hmm. And there there are times where I don't feel we, we don't always feel strong. We don't always feel our best. Mm -hmm. And but that does help when when your mind is strong and you know that, you know, I have persevered through so much more in the past and um, whatever I'm going through today or whatever it is that mm -hmm. I'm experiencing. Um, maybe it's a, a low point in your life because of whatever. It could be some type of past trauma that's come back or it could be something that's happening happening currently in your life. Or maybe you're just a little bit depressed about just maybe some things that aren't going your way or same things that are happening in your life. And just having that that strong mind, that belief. Um, and I always kind of go back to, again, ceremony to mm -hmm. when you've had those moments of doubt mm -hmm. and you've had those moments where you're like, oh, I don't know if I can handle this. And you're like, no, I can. Mm -hmm. I can. And, you know, I, I, we have our ancestors behind us. Our ancestors want us to be happy. Our ancestors mm -hmm. want us to be well. And that's one of the things I always say to people. And I'll say this to, to all of you who are listening to this live is that I believe this and I don't know what I want to know what you think of this, Don, but I believe that the creator wants us to be happy, wants us to feel good about ourselves and wants us mm -hmm. to, to be okay. Absolutely. And, and I think maybe sometimes we, we don't, we don't want to allow ourselves to, to be okay because we're so entrenched in the struggle or we're, we're so um, invested in maybe certain things that we know are very difficult. And sometimes we forget to laugh and to, to smile and just to allow ourselves to be happy. And to me, like that's a, one of the best forms of decolonization mm -hmm. is to allow yourself to be happy. Absolutely, because we were the trauma, the generational trauma that we faced, you know, our people faced and it's been it's been passed down. You know, it's I think right now we're in this phase where we can we're starting to break those barriers of trauma by choosing to be in self in self-care mode. Right. So in self-care we're looking at our traumas and we're actually saying no i can be happy someone's not telling me not to speak my language someone's not telling me that i can't believe in my ceremony anymore someone's not telling me i can't practice my ceremony anymore that's why our ancestors made those long walks right that's why they they sacrificed for us and it brings honor to them when we do laugh when we do smile when we do share compassion and we share love for one another too you know, um, I think about it sometimes and I'm like, man, because it's not easy being positive all the time. OK, I can be loving all the time, but I might be mad loving you, too, at the same time. So I'm just going right, to say yeah. <laughs> And sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, there is something called tough love and being being compassionate also means sometimes telling people what they need to to hear as well. And there are some there, there are some cases where we have to put up boundaries mm -hmm. to ensure that our spirit is protected. And that's a type of self-compassion. And so we, we talk a lot about being compassionate to others and being loving to others. But what about yourself being loving and compassionate to yourself? And, and I'll be honest with you. This is something that I really I really struggle with this. Yeah. I, I really do. There's time I feel like I'm harder on myself than anybody could ever be. And oh, I've, I've really tried to just tell myself, give yourself a break, dude. <laughs> like, it's OK. <laughs> <For real. laughs> it's OK. Yes. Like, you, it's OK if you can't get everything done that you said that you were going to get done by this date. It's okay. It'll be there tomorrow. Every, the, you know, the sky isn't falling. It doesn't make you a failure because things didn't turn out exactly the way that you wanted them to turn out. And, and I've just kind of learned to have a little bit more self-compassion as opposed to always doing for others and expressing mm -hmm. love and compassion for the people around me, whether it's family or friends or what have you. But what about, what about ourselves? And, and, and that's such a selfless thing is when we take care of ourselves, because when we take care of ourselves and we address ourselves and we say, OK, here, here are um, here's some love for myself. I'm going to be patient with myself. And, yeah, maybe I didn't do that perfectly because I, I suffer with that perfect syndrome. Like I have to excel. I have to get it right. I have to get it right the first time, not the 10th time, you know, and 
without, you know, putting myself down too, because I didn't, I didn't get it right the first time. Right. And that's life though. And now I think about all the times I wasted being hard on myself because of my own unrealistic expectations of myself, you know, and, and just kind of setting myself, sabotaging myself for, for failure. Right. Yes. You know? Yeah. And not, like and not really that. knowing it. Yeah. I feel like I've done that <laughs> throughout my adult <laughs> life where I've kind of set myself up at times where I've said, no, you have, it, this has to be done. It has to be done this way. And then, you know, it doesn't exactly turn out the way I want it. And then all of a sudden, no, I'm a failure. It's like, no, no, that's life. Right. And, you know, sometimes you're going to, you're going to make it to, to the mountaintop when you said you were going to make it to them. Sometimes it might take a little bit longer. You have un, unexpected things that come up. And, and that's one of the things I think that has held me back at certain points in my life. And I do not let it hold me back anymore is this idea that things have to be done perfectly. What I've mm-hmm. realized is now you just move in the direction that you want to go in. If you want to be happier, take, you know, happiness is like a journey. I see it more as a journey as opposed to a destination. It's like, oh, I'm happy. And, you know, no, you're not going to be happy all the time, right? <laughs> happiness is like, you know, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. And that's, and that's okay. And mm-hmm. it's the same thing with the things that I want to do. I, I don't put so much pressure on myself anymore to make my podcast perfect. I deleted Don. I probably deleted, I don't know how many podcasts I re- record them and I don't like them. And then I decided, really? uh, yeah, I'm like, I'll oh, delete. Cause something wasn't said perfectly. <laughs> and, and, and I've just realized that, you know what? No, stop it. Nothing is going to be perfect. And, so, and that's, anyway. I, I feel like that's where we are living up to the expectations of others. And that's also a trauma response from people like um, from people of our of our of our past, right? Our our parents and grandparents, and you know the trauma of expectations, right? Because back in back in the day, think about it. You know, our our elders were very patient and very kind. It wasn't reprimanding, and it wasn't you know brutal and hurtful it was in a way that they you know respect respecting ourselves and i think that's something that's missing is respecting our spirit and honoring ourselves in that way um just like you would go to just like you would go to ceremony and honor the elders there we have to honor our spirit there too right because it was passed down to us um that's just kind of my perspective on that and and happiness is a choice right Things could be, I remember being in a point in my life where things were just not where I wanted them to be. And it was tough. It was hard. And I thought, you know what? It's it's not going to last forever, though. It doesn't last yeah. forever. <clears throat> yeah. No, my mom always would say that to me growing up. She would always tell me that, you know, wh- whatever's going on that isn't, the way that you want it, uh, it's not going to last. <laughs> it doesn't last. And you know, there's always something good that comes from maybe difficult moments that you have in your life. And I never understood what that was. She meant that. <laughs> I never did. I'm like, oh, whatever. There we mom, go again. I know, mom, right? I was always so caught up in whatever was going on with me. But no, you she was right. There was to. always some kind of lesson that I needed to learn or there was some kind of like personal growth that I would get from, you know, just things that were difficult, maybe, Mm -hmm. maybe things that I failed at. And, um, I I think that's what she was trying to tell me was like, Hey, look, you're going to learn, you're going to learn from the difficult times and you're going to become stronger. You're going to become better. It can't always be good. Our aunt, like you said, our ancestors, Mm -hmm. all the, the hard walks and all the difficulties that they went through to get us here. Uh, it wasn't easy for them. Just like it's not easy for us, Mm-mm. but they, but like you said, they always, because I think about like my, my grandmother, I mean, just one of the most amazing, beautiful women ever, mm-hmm. just always. So I can't even know how to describe her just loving, I guess, mm-hmm. just loving and, um, and, and had, <laughs> uh, some difficult <laughs> issues that she had to deal with. And it's like, that would make somebody really unloving. But, but no, it, it didn't never turn her that way. And, right. 
And that's something that I, I only and, really came to really truly understand and, and respect later as I got, I got, as I got older. I mean, I always just loved her, but didn't really understand just how incredible that is to be able to go through the difficult times that some of our, our previous generations have gone through, but also to maintain that, that happiness and love. And when you were describing last time when we were on uh, our live event, and you were talking about, or maybe we were talking about this personally about your grandfather and just how funny he was and how he's, he had all these stories about him. Anyway, it just reminded me so much of, of my grandfather as well mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how lighthearted he was. They were right. And my Super grandfather lighthearted. and my grandfather was such a, that man, you know, but yet he go, he went off to the war, you know, world war two. And some of the things he had seen and the horrific tragedies and traumas, the PTSD, I'm sure, you know, but then again, he was also, he was very, um, he turned to his ceremonial ways. He turned to our traditional medicines for before he left and when they returned, you know, so those were things that, you know, was, those were things that you respected in the doing of of who we are as the net people. And so when you look at it that way and you think, okay, well, I can go back to my medicine, right? Um, you know, it, it, it truly is our identity as Diné, it's as indigenous people, as native people, taking that medicine that they took and they consumed it, they utilized it, you know, they protected our homes with it. And to really come back and go, okay, but still enjoy life and happiness and fun and humor. Oh my gosh, my grandfather was like, I was like, man, he he did all of this, but yet he was the funniest man ever. I remember I, there's some stories I was thinking, man, grandpa, like, just why? <laughs> <laughs> like, really? It's so funny because I'm thinking of my grandfather as well, and I'm thinking the same thing. <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing. Like you did, same thing. I mean, he and my grandmother, there was a story. He didn't have his glasses on, and there was a, he was hunting, but he didn't have his glasses on, so he couldn't see far. But my grandmother was with him. So she, you know, he, he she got the gun and she kind of aimed it for him, like behind and aimed it. And then she told him to shoot. So he did. And they, he got his kill. But it was so funny because it was like he didn't have his glasses on. Couldn't find him. She, my grandma's over here trying to, okay, you know, it's, you know, teamwork, I guess. <laughs> but it was I so funny. It. And then another time he wrecked on the toboggan going down the with my brother going down the road, you know, like you're not supposed to do these things on the, on the road, but you know, there's a hard turn instead of making the hard turn, they go off over the edge. So it's like, <laughs> this is in the snow and you know, just so many things that you think about it and they're like, this is a Navajo code talker in world war two yeah. and this, but he chooses to spend his life with his family in happiness and humbleness and cultivating that for us. So I have to say, you know, emulate that. That's very powerful. That's, that's very powerful. How do I emulate that? Right. You know, yeah. and, and I seen their struggles and grandma struggles and they didn't break. They didn't, they weren't sitting there crying. Like, how am I going to get it done? Or how am I going to pay my bills? You know, everybody, just came together and we were, we were, we were so together as a community and a family, you know, but Western colonization says, Oh, they need to move out at a certain age. They need to not do this at a certain age, you know, do all for, our, like we talked earlier, it's all for ourselves and not a unit, not a community. Yeah. yeah that's interesting that you bring that up. It makes me think a lot about just the loss of um, community and mm -hmm. I love when you when you do introduce yourself and you introduce your clan, right? And mm -hmm. and who you belong to, that sense of community, that sense of family. And I think generally speaking, in the dominant Western culture, there is a complete loss of that. And I think that's why so many people are struggling with depression and anxiety and loneliness. I mean, apparently, from what I have read, lonely loneliness is like an it's like a an epidemic across the United States. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Yeah. I didn't realize just how, how lonely people are. And 
man, it made me really, really sad because that's the last thing I am. As well. <laughs> I'm like this social butterfly. So when it came to the, the, the pandemic and shutdown, forget it. I was still out there trying to figure out where is everybody, you know? <laughs> right. Right. You know? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I feel like I'm part of, you know, so many, um, uh, you know, different communities too, because I have my jujitsu community that I'm a okay. part of. And that, that is like such a great community for, for people always suggest to people, like, let's just say you are feeling like you want to get in better shape and you want to do something for yourself. One of the greatest gifts you can give is to, you know, become a jujitsu practitioner because you're going to be around really cool, interesting people, people who are, are probably really different than you, but then you're going to share this really cool, um, this cool lifestyle that's very healthy. Uh, that's going to uh, provide you with, um, you know, a lot of, you know, just really good personal medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, you're going to have friends. You're going to make friends too. Like, wow, what a cool thing to do to make friends while you're getting healthy. <laughs> right. That's like, that's amazing. To me, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with, you know, like I said, we were talking about you practicing yoga, you know. Um, it's that community and that common commonality, right? And common space and, and sharing that with each other. And this is one thing I always said, you know, if we were meant to be alone, we'd all have our own little island. Yeah. We, we, we'd all have our own little island. So we're not, we're meant to be social. We're social people, right? And so we have to, but when we when the trauma says divide and conquer, we started to do that. And we started to do that within our communities now, you know. And Absolutely. I love that, you know, about uh, Jeremiah's grandpa over here, you know, um, in was well, second grade. But he probably had more education from life experience as, yes. and from teachings of the ancestors than anyone anyone could ever teach in a school because obviously they're not teaching what they need to be teaching about native indigenous you know things in the school absolutely i was that kid in school in government history and all that like we didn't do that that's not us as natives <laughs> my teachers were just like oh geez Don. i'm like nah -uh. i love it I, be I believe it too i bet you were that person <laughs> i was are you kidding me i was like excuse me that's not us that's not our people well the we granddaughter of a, a Dene code talker. Yes. I'm sure you were <laughs> correcting a lot of people about a lot of different things. And you really time, didn't have a choice. You didn't well, have a choice. And, okay. So I was raised always stand firm in what you believe, especially if it's what you believe is right and a right by our people, right? Stand firm on that. And, you know, if you have a voice, stand up for those that don't have a voice, right? And, uh, and so I was raised that way. And then there's sometimes, you know, backfires on my parents. And they're just like, man, who raised you? <laughs> like, you know, but yes, um, it was very, it was much about the integrity of who we are. And that poured over into the education system of like, well, no, that's not, that's not how all of us, we're not all one type of tribe or native american there's many of us that's right you know right. so don't loop us all together in this and that's what yeah. we've always even as native americans we're looped into all these categories as we're all different tribes um you know nations right because we're, we're we're regional so it's not like yes. we're, we're all dinner we're all in there you know it we're different yeah no i mean that's <sighs> The first thing I always try to teach people when it comes to um, indigenous history or just contemporary indigenous life is that the first thing people need to, to know and learn and always remember and not, not forget is that there are literally hundreds of different unique communities that had their own customs, mm -hmm. that have their own history, their own unique language, their own unique way of looking at the universe, their own forms of health and wellness. And that's what makes indigenous life so dynamic. Mm -hmm. is that you're right is that indigenous communities all get lumped together in the same category and um it's really not fair to do that to such a diverse group of people mm -hmm. and that's where all the stereotypes come from 
That's where all the nonsense comes from. Mm -hmm. The labeling, the labeling, you know, yes. the labels and the stigmas that we go through, right? And my sister, Crystal, even in elementary, she's not teasing because we all grew up together. So I have some of my family and friends here on TikTok, you know, I shared with them. There, there are a lot of them. We grew up together in these split spaces, right? Yes, I did say it in elementary too, is what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of. And her grandfather is also a uh, Navajo code talker too. Oh, no kidding. Yes, yes, Crystal. That is pipe up and say something. So <laughs> yeah, Crystal, she, thank you so much for yes. joining our show. Is she on TikTok? Is she on Yeah, she's on TikTok over here. She's all she was. You've thrown me under the bus over there. <laughs> <laughs> so even in elementary school, teasing. I love it. She's not I teasing. It. It's true. <laughs> she's not teasing. It was true. I'll admit yeah. to it. You know, but it, it's true that, you know, um, she's a high, sure, no problem. So, so see, we, we have a whole community, like we said here, that our people are represented in such a humble way, you know. But we have to remember the lineage and the blood that we carry. The blood that runs through our veins is what was, was blessed generations ago. And to remember, and I never, I didn't always understand it. I didn't always participate in, in these, you know, I got caught up in the Western thinking growing up, you know, these are the ways and these are, you know, this is the trend. This is the in thing. This is how we, you know, hang out and do, you know, do the stuff. Right. But now I look back and yeah, thankfully I had a very colorful life and it was fun, but at least now I know and remember my lineage and my heritage and my history and my bloodline. And to know that, um, you know, it's, it's something to be honorable and to carry that with honor. And Crystal just says, my grandfather who was the co-talker was the first American Indian Arizona state Senator too. Yes. Oh, wow. Very yes. cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I forgot about that Crystal. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's um do you feel a sense of responsibility, Don? I mean, the fact that you your grandfather gave so much, right, during a time of need. Mm -hmm. Talk about the ultimate sacrifice. Um and do you feel that sense of of where you need to get out there and you need to do your part because of um your your background i mean you you carry the last name of a very important historical figure right mm -hmm. manuelito mm -hmm. uh the granddaughter of a, a navajo code talker and you have done so much not just not just in the 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 area of health and wellness by the way so if you're you are listening to this again if you just uh, chimed in or tuned in i should say um welcome to the show and we have don manuelito joining us and um, well, it looks like, uh, my live, hold on a second, refresh here. Can you see me live? You guys, you're still on. It says, it says live will end. And, uh, we have, uh, detached inactivity during your, okay, Alyssa. what is going on? Why is that? On my end, it says you're fine. It says we're live. Um, yeah. On Instagram, I'm D underscore smiles one four. Alicia, this is weird. This has never, Don. This has never happened to me on on. Are you getting uh, kicked off? It says verify. You continue. Let's see here. Unable to verify. Let's see. Crystal here. says I can still see you. Thank you, Alicia. Um. Okay, I think I'm back. That was crazy. You didn't even go anywhere on this end. Oh, it was weird. I have never seen. So check this out. So it had me do this verification thing and it was like making <gasps> me do this matching game. <laughs> it was making me do a matching game. <laughs> I guess I wasn't doing it right, but it was like, you're, okay, you need to match this, this there to <laughs> your cyber <laughs> world, your cyber spirit. You know, right. distraction. <laughs> Sorry about that. You all. Okay. So I'm going to get back to my question. Um, but um, yeah, do you, I mean, obviously the granddaughter of a, a Navajo code talker and all the different things that you've done in your community. It's not just health and wellness, but you know, you, you've 
um, been a part of so, so many different um, movements. And um, obviously you've given a lot to yourself, a, a lot of yourself to your community and also to just indigenous communities in general. So do mm -hmm. you feel like that sense of responsibility, like you feel like you have to do these things? Mm -hmm. um, where does that come from? Um, I, well, it was always taught to me. I always wondered why, you know, growing up as a young girl, I, you know, from, I'm the youngest of four siblings. So it was always me that was, no, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. And you have to, you know, all that. And it, I didn't understand it. My mom said, one day you'll understand. You'll, you'll understand. And now I get it, you know, and I, and I was taking part in ceremony, was doing these things with, you know, my grandparents and, and my mom on both sides of my nations, you know. And she said one day, because I couldn't do all the stuff that the kids wanted to go do. I mean, yes, I played a lot of sports just to make, you know, to, to mix up the world, you know, in my little world. But yes, I, I feel like it's a great sense of responsibility. Now I understand it as an adult, the responsibilities of the legacy of Chief Manuelito's, um, you know, especially the motto, his legacy that he left and for all our people. And the model, you know, um, go out and climb the ladder of education, despite what the white man did to us. And I think in our last life, we, we, we went over that. And, and so now I feel like it's a sense of responsibility to be a voice for our people and not just in, in wellness, but across the board, you know, and, and it's primarily in our wellness system, but, you know, um, I serve on different committees and boards, you know, to make sure that our people have a voice at the table, you know, yeah. and, and sometimes I'm not invited. I just, you know, attend anyway, and <laughs> show up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, what? sometimes, sometimes, you know, um, uh, the invite, maybe you didn't get it. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you just gonna show up just in case it, you, you missed it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh, by the way, you know, I, I didn't get one, but here I am. You know, so. <laughs> I've done that plenty of times where I, I didn't quite get the the official invite. But I kind of invited myself, or I was like, well, I think I, I should be there. I think I I, you know, there. and I think that's a spirit led thing. That's having a relationship, and that's part of what I want, want wanted to ex ex express is that that's part of that relationship with these parts of your wellness wheel is knowing when to listen, being aware of these things that are speaking to you. Again, in the physical part, what are your check engine lights? Are you fatigued? Yeah. Are you tired? Are you, you know, high dehydrated? Are we, you know, having headaches or, you know, high blood pressure, these different areas of our wellness wheel when it comes to the physical aspect, right? Nutritionally, you know, when you start getting stuff like um, results from the Western world of medicine, you start getting results. See, this is where it becomes a benefit is that they can take your 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 blood results. Right. And they can find out if you're diabetic, yeah. if your liver's you know, mm -hmm. functioning OK or not. Right. Um, all these things that, you know, what what does it look like from the inside out? And so there are benefits to it, but it, but not taking it out of context and saying, okay, um, this is what the answer was. And, you know, sometimes it sets us into anxiety, like, oh yeah. my gosh, now there's something wrong with it. Cause for a long time, our Diné people, our blood is sacred. Blood is sacred. So you don't just take blood out. We don't go and get um, transfusions. It's not something we just, you know, okay. Cause you're putting some, someone else's blood in my body. You're putting that spirit, you, you're putting something in there that doesn't belong to me. We don't do that. And there's reasons and purpose for it. And so when we look at things like that and you're like, wow, you know, so when you say there's something wrong with my blood, that's a bad thing. I'm not going to the doctor. I'm going to my, my doctor over here, my traditional medicine, my healer. Right. right. So you have to understand. And so the cultural barrier with Western medicine and our traditional practices it's, you know, that's something that needs to be addressed too. Yeah. Such a good point. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to circle back again, just again, if you just joined, um, on YouTube or TikTok, uh, we have Don Manuelito on the show and I wanted you to give you an opportunity again to talk a little bit about your business, 
talk a little bit about some of the things that you're doing right now, some things that have just kicked off just not that long <gasps> ago. We haven't even yes. done that. I know. Let's let's do it right now. Okay. So, so you all know that last it. last week, um, and this is part of a part of it, you know, let's an option. I felt like with manually to health and wellness systems, you know, everyone's always asking, well, what do you do for gut health? You know, because I do eat kind of I'm not completely 100 percent healthy. OK, but we're going into 34 weeks. So I got to get this right first and then we'll head into. So what I had, what I designed and came up with and and sought out was really a balanced system to our gut health. And what does that look like? Right. How many of us eat? healthy nutrient foods, nutrient dense foods, not many of us, how many of these eat high fiber diets. So I decided probably just over a year ago to really look into alternative um, supplements that we could take and that was holistic, that was raw ingredients and to help our digestive system with the foods that we're putting into our, our bodies, right? Because it's not always broken down or anything. So we came out with our own health and wellness line, Shana. Shana is wellness and a bid is stomach. So see the little digestive. So we are the first um, Native woman owned and operated health and wellness company. And it is Shana Wellness. And we're coming out with a complete line. And right now only have I only have two and I don't even have my bottle over here. So this is a bit, this is your digestive enzymes to help balance out the gut health. And we just launched this, I, I think a couple of weeks ago, I've been on, the, I, I don't even know how many days, Shauna, you're going to have to bring me up to date on that one. <clears throat> and then the yeah, this, other is, one. this is new. Just so if you're watching and you're listening to this, this is all new. Uh, Dawn um, has been working on this for a while and basically just kicking this off. So, um, so we're talking about one of the first indigenous wellness, health and wellness businesses, and you have some products that, that you're, you're able to share with our community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're just now beginning to understand the importance of, uh, our gut wellness, right. Mm -hmm. Our, our, the, the problems that people have in their gut says so much about your immune system. Uh, depression, system. stress, and Hormones. all the different things. Yeah, hormone issues. Like, it's just so crazy. And again, so many di the different things. I know we talked a lot about this last week, but please kind of tell us again just how important gut, gut health is. It is everything to our system. You know, I talk about mental health. Mindset is everything, right? Well, physical health, it's your gut health. Really, the inside, the digestive system, it's, it's, it's an engine, right? And when you put stuff in your engine, it's not the best fuel source. So let me ask you again, we talked about this. You ride a motorcycle. Yes. You ride, do you take care of it? I do. <laughs> I do. I take <laughs> really good care of my motorcycle. <laughs> so most riders do. Most riders yeah. do because they want it to run efficiently, right? And you're trained, you're, you're jujitsu fighter, right? Yep. You take, do you take time to practice and train and all that? Yes, I do. Okay. So we think about that. We took, put time and effort into these passions in parts of our lives, but we kind of neglect what we don't see. And that's our 100%. gut system. You don't see it out of sight, out of mind. I don't worry yeah. about it. Right. <laughs> Someone says, my gut likes chocolate over here. <laughs> I think that goes for all of us. <laughs> it's both, um, Crystal. It actually helps get your gut in balance. So whatever you're lacking, your gut biome has so many nutrient densities that it's supposed to help upload. But if we're not eating the right foods with the right nutrients in it to help really fuel our system, then it kind of just starts doing what it needs to do to survive adding yeah. stress and stress is an underlying mm. cause to most health issues and health sicknesses. And yes, the immune system, it boosts your immune. So this has actually eight um, enzymes to help with the digestive system. We're full of enzymes. Enzymes are a protein and it actually helps aid in digesting the foods that we are eating and yeah, uploading just, them. I get nerdy about this stuff. So, Oh God, no, this stuff is really, it's really fascinating to me. I know that um, there's just a lot of people who have 
just so many health issues centered around um, their their stomach, whether it's from caused from stress or it's caused from poor diet. There's just a number of lack of sleep. It just throws their their gut biome off. And I didn't realize I did not realize any of this stuff. This is all very recent to me. And again, this health and wellness journey for me, it's like literally oh, it's over 20 years, over mm -hmm. 20 years long. I've just slowly acquired more and more pieces of information and knowledge. But the, the gut is something that's that's new, something that okay. I just recently kind of tried to focus in on. You, you said 20 years, right? And for yes. me, I'm more like, I've, I've been doing this for a long time, right? But addressing my gut issue has been more more recent. Like, obviously, I'm a cancer survivor. So that would be, be 11 going into the 12 years here, right? So, but think about this. Your age, the how long you've been here in this world. How long have you been eating, Dr. B? For 20 uh, or you have a long I've been eating. Yeah. Eating since, since birth. Exactly. <laughs> <Just> before birth. <laughs> 50 yeah. years, 50 right. Years. Right. Hey, yeah. big five. Oh, high five. <laughs> We're five, five. Um, so think about it. So for 50 years and about 47 of those years, you weren't in control of what you ate. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you got, you know, so, about that time that's that's 47 years of behavior patterns yeah so when we want that quick fix overnight transformation it doesn't happen because we've had this many years of behavior patterns of behavior thinking and our relationship with food yeah so it you know and the gut biome you have to really condition it all over again to eating healthy. It does. The, the best part about us is that we have such amazing engines in our body that it can do what it needs to. It knows what a vitamin D is. It knows what vitamin A is. It knows what vitamin C is. It knows what to do with it as long as we have the other components. So an enzyme is basically like a, a piece of the puzzle right? that fits to the other part of what it needs, right? And then it takes it and uses it for fuel. So what is the product she's talking about? Um, so it takes it and uses it for fuel. So that's what these do. It takes the nutrients, it takes it and breaks it down and helps use it for fuel and also helps get rid of the unnecessary stuff in our gut system, in the itch eat, which is your, <laughs> which is your, um, your small intestines and large intestines. Yeah. Awesome. So the, I, I they're it. asking what this is. It's a all natural raw ingredients supplement to help your digestive system. So yeah, it's a bit and it's um, Shana and you can find it on my website, domanualito.com in the trading post. It's in the trading post. Everyone. I love it. I love it. I, and I really um, have a, uh, a lot to learn, I guess you can say in this, in this, uh, area of, of health and wellness. So what are like the worst things we were talking about this last week? What are the worst things for your stomach? It's sugar, right? It's gotta be sugar. Is it sugar, alcohol? What is it? It's sugar. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you something. Okay. Would you pour sugar into your gas tank? Oh God, no. Why? No. What would happen? That amazing <laughs> 108 <laughs> cubic inch motor of mine. <laughs> <laughs> right? No. I, I, won't, I won't even, I mean, I, I won't put anything but the best. The best <laughs> gas in it, right? The best fuel in it. Yeah. I mean, I, I pay a lot of money to put the best fuel in my bike. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Right. Yeah. But when you look at your gut system, what are we putting in there? Majority of, oh, them, of, of our mean, people. Junk. Junk. Sugar. That's what most people are. are sugar. sugar. I mean, there's a sugar epidemic in our country. Mm -hmm. Everything has sugar. Everything. Everything. You look at, if you eat anything out of a box or a bag, it's probably loaded with sugar. Mm hmm. It, it is. Yeah. It's all loaded with sugar. Um, it's. So everything turns to sugar. Okay. 
and I'm not talking table sugar. I'm talking that it, what our body does to our food, any food, whether it's a protein, a fat or a um, carb, it turns to, turns it to sugar to use it for fuel, which is energy. You know, it's it. What people don't understand is that everything turns to a sugar molecule in your blood glucose. But depending on what kind of food your body utilizes. So if you're eating a bunch of processed foods, there's not very many nutrient dense, dense minerals, vitamins in the food. But if you're eating like, say, your vegetables and your fruits and your raw foods, if you're eating those, your body knows what to do with it. It does turn it into a sugar, but it also knows what to do with it in the gut and it uploads it for fuel. So and it doesn't spike your blood sugar as a result. No, yeah. and your pancreas can, you know, knows what to do with it. Right. Those kinds of natural sugars are different than something that's processed and that's filled with preservatives and, you know, so it's 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 educating people and understanding this process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just feel like what We're you just a said. Bunch of sugar ants. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think, but what you said was really makes a lot of sense. Um, when it's on the outside, you can kind of you can see the, the problems, but what's going on mm-hmm. in the inside, you don't see it. So when you're doing harm to yourself, you don't even really know, or you can kind of hide from it because you're not seeing it. You're not, I mean, you do see the results, like obviously through years of overeating and gain weight. I mean, I, that's how I know, you know, when I'm not feeling my best, it's always because I've just I've eaten too much. And that's one problem I feel like in our, in our, in our culture, like there's such a, a food and consuming a lot of food is such a big part of a lot of indigenous, I think, um, uh, ways of celebrating and, and, and being communal and, but the food that we were eating back in our ancestors' times were just so different and so much healthier and were meant for our bodies. And now we're eating all this stuff that's not meant for us. It's not meant for our genetic. It doesn't fit into our genetic coding. And I no. know this. I know this. Every time I eat something, I'm like, ah, oh, my ancestors didn't eat that. Because that's how I feel so well, Let me go ahead and do it. So. Yeah. <laughs> I had a, a – gosh, I have a, I have some Filipino uh, – uh, friends and they gave me some of, uh, some, some bread and it had, it was really good. Oh God. So good. So good. But you know, I feel a certain kind of way after, after eating it. And I know, I just know nah, that that's, that's a lot of wheat. Mm-hmm. A lot and of that's wheat. another thing though. There's, um, as a matter of fact, it, when you become, when you become a consumer, when you become a, I have a, um, a Facebook group you get added in there and we talk about obviously wheat and March is we're, we're looking at it's national nutrition month. So we're going to go into fiber and oh, cool. insoluble, insoluble and soluble fibers. And that has a lot to do with wheat, with whole oats, chia seeds, all these things that people are afraid to eat because of the gluten. Well, yeah. what they don't, what we don't understand is like, say, say, your Red Lakes area and you get the wild rice there. Right. It is one of the better wild rices than eating jasmine rice, white rice, brown rice, all these, because there's still a process there. But when you get it and they're harvested with that rice, it's, it's a whole different experience. Yeah. I've had wild rice several times and I've never felt any kind of way, but good from eating yes. wild rice. Um, I had a friend of mine go, I think to Minnesota, somewhere in Minnesota, some community brought me back a couple of bags of their traditional. Oh, it's the oh, best. It was so, it was so mm-hmm. I had, I cooked it like a stew. So I cooked it with some meat. It was just really, it was incredible, but yeah, I, my body didn't get any kind of weird reaction at all from mm-hmm. it. You know, I'm, I'm very food sensitive. And the thing about it is, and we, again, I know we talked about this a little bit last week, but when when you eat well and you start to feel good and you start to kind of realize your your full potential because you're you're getting a lot of fruits healthy fruits and vegetables healthy proteins 
and you start to feel good. And then you do eat something that you're, doesn't really sit well with your body. Maybe it's, I don't know, dessert or whatever, mm -hmm. something that's just not good for you. I, I mean, I, I feel it tenfold. Mm -hmm. I feel it mm -hmm. tenfold. And, it, and mm -hmm. it's, to, it's to the point to where I don't even want to eat unhealthy any longer. Like mm -hmm. I, I do it every now and again. It's like, okay, I know here we go. I'm going all, <laughs> I'm going all in, <laughs> but, you, I, but I also know, you know, I'm probably not going to feel too good later, a little later. And then the next day I'm probably going to be a little bit off. Mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's funny because we already do that. Right. Um, and then, you know, when we take something away and then we add it back later, we're like, Oh, whoa. You know, your, your insights will tell you this. Yep. People will be like, oh, Absolutely. I can't eat something spicy or, oh, I can't eat lactose. I can't eat dairy. Right. But there's also because those enzymes to break down those things are missing in your gut biome. Yeah. We're, so because we're, we're not eating them, we're not re re resourcing them. Right. Um, you, the gut biome does so much for our whole state our homeostasis, that there's a reason why we're facing all these allergens, all of these food allergies, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, um, you know, irritable bowel syndrome, acid reflux, all of these, they're not normal. People have to yeah, understand true. these are not normal issues. It's because of the food that we're consuming, you know? Yeah. It, 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 it's crazy. It, it, these are not normal, but people will go and go, okay, well, I got to go to the doctor and, or I got to go to Walgreens first. Let's go there first. Or Alka-Seltzer, Pepto-Bismol, anti-acid, Tums, something. And then if it doesn't, set, you know, get settled, they'll go to the doctor. Right. But really it's because we're not paying attention to what's, what we're eating. Start with an I like my personal favorite is an alkaline diet, which is high in, more about that? high in fiber, more fibrous. Okay. Um, it's more raw foods. Um, alkaline diet, meaning, you know, you don't get the acidic foods. Um, and they're more, they're more of your natural foods, not nothing processed. No, no, you know, not, not high density of bread, pastas, those kind of carbs. Um, your carb sources come from your fruits and your vegetables. I think those are great mm -hmm. sources for carbs. I feel, thank you. Thank you, poet. poet I appreciate it. Um, yeah, no, I, I feel so good whenever I eat fruits and vegetables. I feel great. Mm -hmm. I feel fantastic. I'm a firm believer in a high fiber diet. I think, you know, at least for me, I don't know. I just feel, I feel so much. It's like fuel. Mm -hmm. I feel really, really good. And that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it's supposed to be for is the fuel for your body. Um, you know, hi, Mickey, sister. Um, you know, it, it actually fuels your body from the inside out. And what you don't see is that, you know, you also have to cleanse that body too. Yeah. So whether it's your bloodstream that you're cleansing or your digestive tr tract, you know, again, you hear high rates of colon cancer. You hear high rates of diverticul oh diverticulitis now. You ha have high rates of these different diseases on the inside. And it goes to the wayside because you feel a pain, but you can't see where it's coming from. So you kind of just go, okay, it's discomforting. It's this, you know, people are living without their bladders now, be or gallbladders now because they're getting those removed. And so it's so crazy because I've read again recently about just these high rates of colon cancer among youngsters in their 20s don't even get me started I, I, that has to be because of the the high amounts of sugar and processed foods that we're eating mm -hmm. right yes. along to, uh, to go along with probably an unhealthy lifestyle maybe smoking drinking some of that's contributing to it but that is just that's so and the Crazy sedentary man. lifestyles and the sedentary lifestyle. Yeah. We talked a lot about that the sedentary uh, lifestyles, you know, and it's really finding out what is our relationship in these areas again? How, you know, what, how do we relate to these things? What's our relationship with food? Are we eating our emotions? Yeah. Are we not, are we mentally not checked out that we're just kind of just eating whatever, just because we think we, we need to eat something. Are we not eating at all? Well, yeah. Or not eating. 
Yeah. And what's our spiritual connection to our foods? Because our ancestors used to have that spiritual connection because in order to take something from Mother Earth, we had to make an offering of thankfulness. Yeah. So there was an exchange of something and we don't take from her. And nowadays we're just taking everything from her. Yeah. It's so true. I mean, I feel like the, the destruction to the earth coincides with, you see the destruction of our bodies, right? And this, yeah. this, this need for, for so many people to have to be on so many different medications just to keep them, you know, functional. And I'm, I'm really proud to say, you know, I, you know, I am, I'm 50 years old and I'm not on any medications. I don't take anything. I, Me too. I, I feel great. I feel good. And a lot of it is just through the things that you've been talking about. Again, trying my best to make the good, healthy changes. It's been a 20 year process. I started this probably around 30 just wanting to be healthier. I was in grad school at that time and I'd gained a little bit of weight. I remember, I, I don't know if I told the story last week, but I went to the doctor, a chiropractor. I okay. was having issues with my back. I went to a car my shoulder. I went to a chiropractor and he put me on a scale. <laughs> and I remember thinking, man, this guy's scales off. And I told him, I said, I don't think your scales right. And he's like, no, my scales, right. <laughs> and he's like, and I'm like, huh, I don't think I've ever weighed this much before. And so I really tried after that to really kind of get my weight under control. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I was always so active and I was always able to eat whatever I wanted to eat as much as I wanted to eat. But then you start, you hit that point in your life. And again, so for me, it was around 30 is when I was just mm -hmm. like, I realized I just couldn't eat whatever I wanted to eat. And I needed to be more aware of what I was eating and how much I was eating. Mm -hmm. And did you know that, you know, um, with our metabolism that, that um, component, the human growth part component, you know, the one that makes you grow your bones and your bodies grow and everything, you know, um, that starts to go downhill at about age 30. That starts to deplete your, your metabolism is not able to keep up with the processed foods that you're eating anymore. Yeah. So then the weight starts to come on and people are, oh, it's because of age. No, it's because of how we're eating and the yeah. lifestyles, you know, um, that we're living. And it, but you can't see it on the inside. I had yeah. the same wake up call, you know, not too long ago. I was at my heaviest and I have I have my before my before pictures. And I was like, dang, this, you know, <laughs> she's just chubby girl right there. I was like, oh, my goodness. But I didn't. But it wasn't the scale. What it was, was I went to go run a mile. Oh, OK, I couldn't even get down a quarter of a mile. And did you feel like, like the the you felt kind of no. It was my lungs. You I was like, gassed out. Okay. You were gassed out. <laughs> I was like looking around like, what, what just happened? Like, how far did I get? <laughs> <laughs> Serious. It was crazy. That was my, my aha moment, you know, because I mean, up until then, three miles was not a problem. But when you, again, this is my part about relationship with ourselves. Yeah. What was my relationship with myself at the time? It was on the back burner. I was busy taking care of everyone else and everything else that I didn't realize what I, I had done to my body. That's and, so, so interesting. and, and then I went back to the scale the next morning and got on the scale and I was like, what, what? Like, I, I was like, I know that scale's right, <laughs> but I think it's wrong. <laughs> it's like, no. Yeah, no, yeah. I feel, I, I, you know, I, I feel so good when I have my weight under control and, um, well, I, I just feel like my mobility is, is there, you know, training jujitsu, you want to have good mobility. Mm -hmm. You want to have really good hip movement. And, and the more weight that you're carrying as you get older, at least for me, it just slows, it slows me down and it just, uh, reduces my mobility. And, you know, there are some people that carry their heavier weight for all their lives mm -hmm. Yeah, and their body on the inside, their heart is conditioned to carry that weight. Their, their lungs are, you know, their, their vital organs are conditioned. So they don't come up with these 
these high numbers that are like, oh, you're you got high blood pressure or anything like that because they're conditioned to carry that for how long, right? Yeah, it becomes a problem when you start seeing, you know, um, high blood pressure. You start seeing um, A one C um, numbers rise. You know, high blood glucose. You know, um, yeah. And and there are so many ways to address weight loss, right? But it's finding what's healthy for you because there is not a one size diet, one size fits all diet plan. We I are totally all, agree with that. Yeah. We are all you know you uniquely different, and because our makeup, our bodies are different. Your 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 lifestyle and my lifestyle are two different things. Your what your nutrition intake requires is different than mine. That's right. Just on the fact of gender alone, you yep. carry more muscle mass than I do. And then put them factor, you know, your height. I don't know how tall you are. I'm, I'm only six five two. Four. I'm six two, and, and uh, I'm yeah. only five four. So, like, you know, we we put that into factors. So we're not going to be on the same diet. But yeah. you find people doing all these diets. Well, she lost weight, so I'm going to do it too. You know, or he 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 gained a lot of muscle. I'm going to do that too. No, it has to do lifestyle has to yep. do with um our relationship with ourselves again like, yeah, you know, there's, what, so, there's so much to health and wellness it really is i mean people think it's all about working out no it's I'm not all about working out my, it's you know i have a fat thing that i was going to show you yeah yeah no it's definitely not all about you know lifting weights or, mm -hmm. or in your cardio where you need to be i mean a lot of it is just good sleep getting your stress under control the things that we just talked about earlier the theme of our our show tonight, taking care of yourself, just, mm -hmm. you know, spending um, some time thinking about your personal health and wellness. Sometimes, like, mm -hmm. like I said, we get so caught up in doing the good work, which of course it's needed. If you, if you can do it, you should do it, but not at the expense of your own health and wellness, not, the, exactly. not at the expense of um, your, your soul, your spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that's just one of the hardest lessons for me because I've always just gone, gone, just push myself as hard as I could push myself. And I've really tried my best just to kind of take a step back and um, think about my sleep. We talked a lot about the breathing, right? Breathing properly. And uh, during the week that you, you know, you sent me some me messages <laughs> to, to breathe and don't forget to breathe. Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> And yeah, I'm a firm believer in, like, like I said, we're talking about gut health and then the power of breath and, um, you know, that and don't focus. hold your breath and not holding your, yeah, holding your breath is like terrible. It's a terrible thing to do. But everyone does it and, and we don't even realize it. We don't even realize it. Yeah. Or just like how, you know, you have, the, we have a world of mouth breathers. Now people are breathing through their mouths. It's disrupting their sleep and sleep apnea. It's just like a, an epidemic. Mm -hmm. It is just an epidemic well, and it's just, it's, I don't know. It's kind of scary when you think about right. it, it really, really is just how, how poor people's health is. And, you know, I think to myself, I'm like, you know, because people always say, Oh, well, you're getting, I hear this all the time from people like, Oh, you're getting older. You have to watch out for this. And I'm like thinking to myself, well, I mean, I'm not on any medications. I feel good. I don't feel like they're, I'm slowing down. Yes. In some cases I have to be wiser when I train, I don't train recklessly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I have to be smart in the way that I train. But I mean, honestly, I feel like as long as I'm doing the things that I know that I need to do, which is get good rest, eat well, um, and and just generally speaking, kind of lower my stress, take care of mm -hmm. myself. And I feel like I could do I could do just about anything. Absolutely. You know, I mean. When we think about these things too, rest is a huge component. You Okay, there's there's several things we can't live without. Do you know what they are? Well, oh, let's hear it. I know, I know air. Okay, air, right? Yeah. Water. Water. A little okay. water. Okay. And we need some nutrients every now and again, right? <laughs> so we, we probably should get some food, right? Yeah, some food. And then what's the other one? Um, so some food, some, some oxygen, some water. Um, I don't know what <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> What's the... the other one is sleep. Oh, of course. Oh yeah. We yeah. cannot live without sleep. Someone cannot not go to sleep. Yeah. You can't. 
It's the yeah. restoration point of our body, son, right? <laughs> yes, they call that too. But, you know, the essential parts of our being is that we cannot live, literally live without water, air, food, and sleep. Yeah, getting good rest. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the other part of my product, which I don't have sitting here. Yeah, because you do have a sleep aid. Yes, I do. It's a mel melatonin GABA complex. It's a complex mm -hmm. sleep aid. It's a pump that you just place under your tongue about 20 minutes before you go to sleep. And then you get some really good, good rest, REM rest, meaning like you're rested, you go into that sleep state, and then you um, wake up well rested. So you you wake up and you feel good. You know, it's not like groggy and you you, you don't feel very good. Yeah. Well, that's how you know if you had good rest. When you wake up, or do you feel good? Do you mm -hmm. feel like you're you're um, you know, ready to tackle the day? Mm -hmm. And I think so many people are they're they're not getting that that high quality sleep and Ex and yeah. that's the other thing too is quality versus quantity. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, that's what I've learned is what, what kind of quality of sleep am I getting? What quality of food am I getting? Right. Because we can in food, we can go and spend 30 bucks in the drive through. And that's one meal. But I can yeah. go spend 30, 30 dollars in a grocery store and bring home and have food for leftovers, too. Yeah. Right. You know, or meal planning, meal prepping. You meal know, prepping is great. It really is. When people tell me like, oh, I can't do, I can't, you know, I'm too busy. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm like, just stop. I'm like, just stop. I'm, I'm busy. I, you just have, it has to become a priority. I was going to say prioritization of our Priori time, time man management. That's right. It has to be a prior priority. Yeah. Everyone gets 24 hours in a day, right? Mm hmm. We can pick and choose what we do with our 24 hours. Yeah. You can sit on Netflix, you can sit on the couch, uh, and, you know, or you know, go for a walk. Now, somebody had mentioned sun, like you need sun. And I, yes. I think uh, I just want to get your take on this because, you know, you and I both are very active. You know, you're going to be training for a marathon. I'm always at the gym, training jujitsu at the gym, you know, four or five times a week. And, I, um, I, I just love being outdoors. I feel better. What does that do for our spirit? Just being outdoors, whether it's hot hiking or walking, what are the benefits of that? Not just the physical, the obvious physical benefits of moving, but just being outdoors, getting natural sunlight. Well, one thing it's like a medicine for our skin, not only just our skin, but our spirit, you know, light attracts light, right? So you want to make sure that when you are out in the sun, for me personally, I like to be out in the sun. I don't do a lot of sunblock. I probably should just because of the UVA and UVB rays yeah. and stuff. But um, but I do layer up. I do layer up. And so I'm a big hiking. I'm, I'm big on hiking. And for me, if I don't go hiking like I should, because that's my element. That's where my spirit gets its fuel is not just the sun, but the environment of Mother Earth creator. Our medicines are out there. Our plants are, you know, our dirt, our soil. These are spaces where we we connect. And that again, that's the relationship that we have. Right. And yes, um, we do get um, we do get uh, vitamin D from this from the sun. It's yeah. actually, you know, something we absorb in our the largest organ we have is our our epidermis, which is our skin. Right. And so when you think about these things, that is the medicine that we need spiritually, mentally, emotionally, not just the physical aspects, but and the yeah. sun regenerates that it gives us that fuel. And then in our culture and our traditional ways that's sacred to us those are our breaths of life too yeah mm -hmm. yeah well we're we're planning a, a hike to do some filming right we're going to work on that um yes. and i'm going to see if i can out hike you 
just so you know, I'm preparing. I, you know what? I'm I'm wishing somebody would, because uh, so far, <laughs> Don many, everyone zero. <laughs> oh, I like that. Oh, that is a challenge. That's a challenge. I, I love of, that. I love the that. The thing about it is, is that um, should I let you in on a secret or just wait for the hike? Uh, depend. I'm gonna let you decide that one. Hmm. I'll even give you a tip. I'll give you something. Okay. okay. I'll even okay. give you something. Right. Let's just say I say it's a two mile hike. Be prepared for 10. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Cause okay. I always do that to people. Everybody that I go with always says, Don, Oh, it's just a mile over there is. Oh man. Don, you're reminding of my buddy, Joe. <laughs> my buddy Joe lives in, he lives in Yosemite national park. Mm -hmm. He lives in the park. Okay. And um, his wife is a park ranger. He took me on a hike. Oh. He took me on a hike. He's like, oh, it's just a really easy hike. I can't remember the, the name. I of would it, love but... to go there. Oh, uh -huh. it was beautiful. You know what? I, I have some pictures. I have some video. I can send it to you so you can just check it out. I mean, it's wow. Like, um, the spot that he took me. It wasn't half dome. It was a it, it was. Uh, another it was just amazing hike mm -hmm. so i did great i mean i did i did fine throughout the hike but then um on the way back i was like man we've been hiking all day long i mean we hiked from early morning we were barely getting back it was late it was late in the afternoon and i remember we were probably maybe a hundred yards from where the car was parked and my legs started to lock up on me <laughs> my legs started to lock up and I, for whatever reason that last hundred yards i it was like the hardest last hundred yards i was so mad at him i was like man you didn't tell me you didn't tell me we were gonna do this today um so, yeah. but yeah it was um it was a you know, it was a fantastic hike it was it was really it was great but it was challenging man it was a challenging one there's some that I, I, I would like to do it out here. I mean, I do, I do superstition every year. I haven't done it yet, yet this year. So I need to get out there and do that one. I also, um, I've done all the ones around here, you know, so they're short, they're short. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. I'll, I'll survive. You'll survive. I think Well, this is what I told Joe. I'll just tell you, um, is I told him, I said, you know, uh, you're not going to leave me out here. So if I can't make it back, you're going to carry me. <laughs> so you're going to have to carry me, Don. I'm six <laughs> two. I'm a little over 200 pounds, like 205. Okay. This is the rule with me. Okay. There's a rule I have here. If you can't make it, you stay or what? <laughs> <laughs> Just don't call the air back people. Okay. Because oh, you don't want to be that indigenous oh, first person. God, out here. <laughs> no, I would don't crawl. Don't be that native guy. I would crawl. Okay? I I'd would like, crawl back, Don, before you would. I would let you do that. I would grab your phone. I wouldn't even do it. I'd be like, nope, you ain't calling anybody. <laughs> You're supposed to be indigenous. <laughs> right. Here? I know. I was so embarrassed. Like my legs were locking up, but it was a it was a pretty brutal hike, and I didn't. I don't think I took enough water, as well. That was definitely Again, one of the that's issues. That's a lot of people's mistake. Is that you know the weather conditions, all of that. It's you should always have water. Yeah. You know, always have a snack. My mom laughed at me one time. She's like, dang, you're packing a four course meal for this hike. I'm like, <laughs> hey, look, mom, you know, um, but the good thing is, is at least out there, there's medicine. And then yeah. I know, you know, I always know where to find water too. Oh, so cool. that is something, you know, um, <laughs> someone says made it through made Sundance. It through Sundance. Can't, can't, give <laughs> can't give in on, on a hike. I know. Trust me. So I was invoking, I was invoking my, my mental toughness at that point in time. I just kept telling my body, you are not going to do this to me. I was telling my, I was telling my body that I'm like, you are not doing My mind was telling my body, you are not doing this to me. You are walking up that hill. And it was a steep, that last hundred yards. I mean, a hundred yards didn't seem like much, but when it's uphill and you've been hiking all day long i mean we were going through some rough terrain mm -hmm. and again you send me national park it was like it was yeah incredible beautiful hike uh, just it was just a beautiful day but that last hundred yards it was uphill i was dehydrated obviously and i just my legs just started locking up on me and i just said uh and he was just he just kept <laughs> uh... he just dusted me 
just kept going and he looked back and he's like, I guess he thought, oh, he'll make it. <laughs> it's only a hundred yards. <laughs> It's messed up. Oh man. I wouldn't do that to you, but I would probably be like, okay, really do. <laughs> <Just, laughs> oh no. boy. Now I'm now I'm getting nervous now. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. No, but like we No, I really, you know, I'm kind of like, I don't know about you, but I'm like a little bit of a competitive person. Of, you know, not that I'm like trying to out hike anybody, but <laughs> you no, know, Joe did out hike me that day. And I'm like, damn, you know, he trains jujitsu with me. So I got him in the gym and, you know, I've been training a little bit longer than Joe. So okay. I, I got well, him in the I'm gym. He got me on the hike. I got him in the gym. Okay. I'm not jujitsu at all. So, you know, <laughs> know. you want a marathon. That's just like, first of all, look, and, tell us a little bit about that. Okay, I was going to say, and the last 200 yards or 200 whatever yards of the marathon is uphill like that okay point, yeah it's inclined up to the washington uh the memorial right <laughs> so mel's like competitive hiking is totally merciless new sport for the summer <laughs> mel we'll put him to the test okay i say we <laughs> I'm, I'm getting nervous now because now i'm starting to feel like you know what i gotta be really ready for this um <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have an advantage. I'm coming back from an injury. Okay. I haven't hiked really. Well, yeah, I did. I kind of did. Um, I haven't, you know, really gotten on any running in, you know, but. Well, well okay. Well, here's my, here's my advantage as well. I've got, I've got much longer legs. I mean, I'm six, two. So you get like two steps to every, every step I take. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, like I said, I haven't had anyone out hike me yet. <laughs> Mel, okay, Mel she runs him. marathons, Mel. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you can take him. <laughs> Got you, Mel. <laughs> oh, so check it out, y'all. So, so just listen, I'm going to be, so we're going to figure out this time to do this hike. I'm going to be recording it. I will be recording at least parts of it. And I'm going to do like a, a we gotta vlog. go live a vlog and if we can do a live do a live as well um with me um hopefully not my legs Passing cramping out. up <laughs> you better have water i am not sending out this air back for you like, no way you just let me die out there. <laughs> well no i did you know we were you know hiking is my passion though it really is it's a space where that's where i can connect yeah you know, I really can, you know, be, be in a space of like, that's my element. That's my element. Um, hiking and cooking is my element. So any paramedics in here? <laughs> they're, yeah, they're going to really in, help. In Boulder Mel. As well. I that's what I just seen Boulder. that. I just seen that. Well, I want to do Pike's Peak one day, Mickey. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Mickey. Mickey and I did the have a soup I down yeah. the canyon okay so check it out i've that always was... wanted to do that one. Ooh, i might be you do to... it in a day yes you can do it in a day yes yeah down and back i don't know i want to go see the falls i'm gonna go camp <laughs> well, yeah you go down there for the night right you can yeah i think that weekend i i we did i know i did because i i was i did a service call down there a site visit down there for their um, sdpi group program and so we went down there uh, Mickey's aunt invited us both and okay. I'd never done it before. We took, you know, we took our two boys with us. They beat us down there, by the way. And there's a sign kind of while you're getting to the community, there's a sign that says this way, you're almost there. And you're still like three miles out or something. <laughs> like that. Dang it. But That's probably it was the spot where people are thinking, what did I do? Why did I do this? There's probably I a lot think... of people are thinking, you know, this is, yeah. So there was the campgrounds that we stayed at. And then I had to hike into town each day. So it was a two mile hike back to town and then back to the campgrounds every day. Man, so awesome. it was beautiful. And then we hiked the falls. So I think over the whole weekend, I, I got in like 32, 32 miles. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Well, we're talking about the lies. We're not talking about just the lies. <laughs> you should <all> the lies. <laughs> Me, Mel? <laughs> we're talking about, I, I've seen the hot people hiking up and just, you know, completely just 
dusted. And when I just saw that, I was like, oh, I want to, I want to do this. I want to, I want to, no, guess, you know, what's on my bucket list? What's that? Rim to rim, the Grand Canyon, rim to rim. Can you do that? Is that? Yeah. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's All the signage. signage. Yeah, yes, signage. yes, that's what yes, it was. Lies. Yes, it was lies. lies. All lies. <laughs> yes, lies. That's what you call an old Indian joke. <laughs> that's messed up. That but the cool thing up. is, is that there was community members. Um, huh, Mickey, there was community members there that were there, and they were like, hey, we'll take your bags for you, you know. So they, oh, they walked us cool. in. They were, they're really cool, cool people. Beautiful people down there. Um, very, I, I actually know people now down there. So, you know, maybe I'm sure they'll be like, yes, come down here, Don, you know, uh, it's, it's on my list. I, I can't remember the last time I was there, but when I was watching the people do the hike, I was just like, oh, this is something, this is something that I, I, I want to do. I want to hike. You should go do a live podcast down there. Oh, that would be incredible. So these are the things that honestly, so I know that you have this new, new, uh, venture that you're on. And I'll just kind of share with everybody here on uh, the people who are sticking it out on TikTok. We're like over an hour and a half into this already. And yeah, we're almost two hours in, Don. And again, we, yeah, did, again. we do these two and a half hour segments. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, this is wonderful. I'm enjoying this like so thoroughly. You have no idea. But yeah, so you have this new venture that you're on. I mean, you've just done so much with your life. Your cancer survivor, marathon runner, have done so much in your community and other indigenous communities, being a voice, um, being of service, and um, I, I just you're you're an inspiration uh, to so many people, including myself. But um, I, um, you know, I'm also trying to just do some things differently. One of the things I would love to do is just like I talked about with going on a hike with you and just talk and having a conversation. And being in the same physical space and sharing, you know, just good thoughts, good energy, and then sharing it with, with the world as well, sharing yeah. it with others, sharing that medicine, yeah. sharing that medicine with others. And mm -hmm. you just, you just took the words right out of my mouth. That's what I share this really good medicine with other people, uh, other people's lives and, and how other people are living, how other people are making it in this world and just doing some traveling and, and talking with people. And then, like Absolutely. I said, sharing it. And that's and what see, I, I'm really looking forward to, to doing in the mm -hmm. future. That's what I, I, you know, that's what I love to do is, you know, um, there were times when I did go on my hikes back, back then in, in Facebook, you know, there was lives and stuff, but they didn't last for a long time on your posts. So I don't know if they're still there or not. Another ton of them in there. But hiking has always been my passion. Again, that's my element. That's my, my, my place. I really love being out there and just exploring different spaces. Um, I don't know how many people would probably agree with this one, but I do want to hike our sacred mountain, which is in the San Francisco peaks out in Flagstaff. Right. I want to hike that one. Um, that is on, on my list too, along with the, with the Pikes peak and we'll go run around with Mickey up there in um, Boulder. Uh, that, she took me on a little hike out there when I went out there with her and, and mom out there and it was just beautiful, beautiful. And I can't wait to go back for that one. Um, just having a lot of, a lot of experiences out there, you know, and that's another thing, you know, I don't, I don't take life for granted. Oh, I used to, I used to, you know, same. that young, that young mentality of like, yeah. Oh, you know, you're invincible and all this stuff. And, and I get it, you know, with age, you make with wiser choices with what we do with our bodies now. Like, you know, when you said you're not recklessly training. That's right. You know, um, the same here. I'm not trying to, well, well, wait, wait a minute. I'm not trying to like go out and win the marathon. I'm trying to do better than I did last year. But I think that's in life. That's everything in life. I'm trying to just do better than yesterday. Right. Yeah. I like that. And, just doing a little bit better than yesterday. And just yeah. FYI, I'm very competitive. Gosh, I like <laughs> no. it. I like I it. Am. I'm so competitive. Like, no, I I'm like an athlete. It. I'm an athlete. That's what well, we do. So, so am I. I know. I mean, I'm like, uh, I'm not ruthlessly competitive. Like, I'm not going to, you know, take out somebody's knee by all <laughs> means. But 
I, I definitely I enjoy it. I enjoy a challenge. I enjoy the mental, physical challenges. Mm -hmm. I always have as a kid, uh, man, if it involved running, jumping, throwing something, uh, right. you know, running over somebody, I played football <laughs> in, in high okay. school, like, man, I was all, I was all about it. Mm -hmm. If it was like a really skilled sport, like I played baseball, uh, probably starting off at Five, five or six, I started playing. Mm -hmm. Never played t-ball. I just went straight to baseball. My dad put me in baseball, and that was one of the sports that I excelled in. But yeah, ultra competitive, and even to this day, you know, I'm in, you know, a little bit of competition with myself, you know, just to try to do better. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, no, I've always, um, I've always had that little competitive streak. So now yeah. that's what mods I've learned. Are for. <laughs> <laughs> it's knees. okay that's what mods are <laughs> we, we got, got the knees, knees. <laughs> i know you know mel has this thing mel keeps me very humble okay yeah she keeps me very humble here uh and um you know she's al always reminds me <laughs> of uh just how silly i could look especially last <laughs> summer with my sprinklers going off. I've uh, this. I remember that live video. I've I remember that live video. Sprinklers, Mel. Uh, <laughs> my sprinklers don't even come on anymore ever since that. Seriously? So, they don't. No, they don't. I need to get so them programmed. Funny. I remember uh, that one. I was like, what oh, God, that was, that was, that was, was funny. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Those were good Those times. Those were good times. But, um, good times, sis. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, always I, have know, a good laugh. It's funny because on the res, growing up on the res, we didn't have this. Um, we didn't. I was like you. I didn't play softball. We didn't play t-ball. We played baseball, and we didn't have the segregated teams, boys and girls. It was co co rec. So yeah. you had to play just just as much and as good as the boys. And you know, growing up, we and it was like that for all sports, baseball, basketball, all of it. You know, so growing up. You know, it was very competitive, even football at recess. <clears throat> the Dene have produced some pretty damn good athletes over the Absolutely. years. Absolutely. Some great basketball players. Yes. Runners, mm -hmm. uh, track, uh, track and field. Um, yeah. I mean, I always tell people like for indigenous people's uh, athletics, man, it's just built into us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what I, I, I love seeing. And I want to see more youth and young athletes go to that next level. Same. And, and, and keep and keep sharp. I feel like they're the, in professional sports. We need to see more of our native athletes out there. You know, and I yeah. love I love seeing them at the Olympic Games. I love that. You know, yeah. making you have, um, I did a video on Janae. Uh, Casnavoid. Yes, yes, I seen that. A Comanche hammer thrower. Yes, she's going to be in the Olympics this year. I, mm -hmm. I'm so excited to see. I, I just like have this good feeling that she's going to win the gold medal. I hope so. I oh, hope so. I'm going to be watching. Mm -hmm. uh, but as a kid, you know, we didn't watch a lot of TV. But I always remember watching the Olympics. Yeah, I love right. the Olympic games, and I always thought, man, what a just a. a a great thing to be able to can be uh, an athlete in the Olympics on this world world stage with all these global athletes. It's just so, mm -hmm. so crazy. So I'm really excited for her just to see how well she does. And I think she's going to, I think she's going to do well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm excited to watch it too. You know, um, I think that, you know, goals and striving for those things are part of our wellness, you know, is having those healthy, healthy goals, you know, those healthy strives to help us, you know, be better, you know, absolutely. And yeah. get us out of our comfort zone, do something that we've never done before. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what, uh, I mean, just looking at our, our histories, you see that in our communities, that was the whole point of, I think, you know, going from childhood to adulthood. And you'd mentioned like the San Carlos, uh, the sunrise ceremony. There's a yeah. physical aspect to it, right? And a lot mm -hmm. of like the coming of age ceremonies that we had, they were very physical and they would take a lot out of you emotionally and spiritually. You had to mm -hmm. prepare yourself emotionally I, um, and spiritually yeah. and physically. The whole mind, again, mind, body, spirit. Mm -hmm. And that those were built into our, our values 
built mm -hmm. into our norms, but also built into our customs. And that was something that, you know, when I was um, growing up, it was something that was already decided when I was born, that this is what I was going to do. So from birth through life, this is what was I was prepared for, because right. it was going to prepare me for the rest of my adult life, the rest right. of life after that's that. That's powerful. You know, we that's it. Don't you think that's missing in our in our in the world in general today? I believe some of it is, you know, our, in our Apache nations, there's a lot. Of, we still practice our ceremony for our young ladies, our, our young girls. Um, we still practice those ceremonies. Um, I, I'm not sure, like I, everyone's different and things are done differently now um, as when I when I had um, had my ceremony. So I just know that, you know, things were a little bit more strict back then. And so nowadays it's it's a little different, you know. Yeah. So but Jeremiah, yeah. Jeremiah says, thanks for sharing. Um, uh, and oh, okay. he's talking about Fort uh, Tahone. It's a worthy story. I'll look into that Ooh. and also look into the conglomerate, uh, conglomerate Mesa. It's uh, an amazing hike and we're fighting a proposed gold mine up there. If you can, uh, Jeremiah, I would like to know more about this, obviously. Uh, something I'd like to look into, um, if you can give us any more information on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the the resolution copper, what they're trying to do to Oak Flat, I know that's sacred. Did you hear yeah. about what just came out? No. Um, I'll have to share it with you. Um, the court ruling was that they were going to turn it over to resolution copper. Oh, my God. Wow. Or the struggle that struggle has been ongoing and you know that fight isn't over and um but we really i mean we this is a time to really step up and it is it's not just our native people but those that that enjoy the land but also the water system that it's going to contaminate that's right what you know that whole that whole system it's going to affect us here so just so if you're listening to this, you don't, don't know anything about Oak Flats. It's a sacred place. If you don't know anything about Resolution Copper, what they want to do is they basically want to mine for copper on a land that is sacred, right? Sacred to mm -hmm. your your people, San mm -hmm. Carlos, uh, the Apaches. And they're basically talking about blowing a hole in the ground that is like... They kind of already are. Yeah. There and already they, they, is a mine there. There, yeah. And if you go out there, it's some of the most beautiful country. I've been out there several times. I've ridden my bike out there. I've been on twos out there. It's so beautiful. You just see the most beautiful scenery, and then you see where they've strip mined, and it's just devastation. It's just mm -hmm. absolute devastation, and it's just so it's so heart heartbreaking and i've been to to oak flat uh a few times um and um i've you know been able to meet uh, the nosy family are you relatives with with the nosy family? no no i do have good friends that are um of the nosy family yeah yeah and i've been able to talk with them about Oak Flats and anyway, it's just really that's the person I wanted to connect you with, you know, that has the the podcast, Fight okay. for Our Fight for Our Existence podcast. Um, his name's um Atom Brown, and he actually um holds that space to um talk about Oak Flat and save Oak Flats. Well, I would love to talk to him. I want to do that's one of the places I would love to go out to to do Hi, an episode on and just to talk about what's going on out there. It's just mm -hmm. it's 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 a tragedy. And Absolutely. the strip mining, the strip mining. Hi, hey. Bay. How you doing, Bay? Good to see you. Um Leanne, yeah. Um what what do we do to stop it? I mean, that's it's been an ongoing struggle. There's been so many people ha have been working hard on that that issue for mm -hmm. so many years now. But there is this. I feel like again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, there's a a a, a real connection between the destruction of our most sacred places, the destruction of the earth, the pollution, polluting of the biosphere, the water, the land, the air. Right. And then, of course, the destruction of our bodies mm -hmm. and the high rates of cancer, the high rates of 
of, I think, feel like depression, all these different mm-hmm. anxieties and these problems that people have. I mean, it's, just, it's due to, I feel like the, the systems and structures of capitalism and settler colonialism and, you know, the resolution copper is just um, in line with that philosophy that nothing is sacred, that everything can be turned into a dollar. And it's just really frustrating to me. It's just, um, Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, we're coming up on two hours. Um, (laughs) If you just tuned in. (laughs) Just tuned in. We're coming up on two hours. We are live on TikTok. We're live here on on YouTube. Um, You can check out Mm -hmm. my channel. It's uh, Dr. B Teaches. And Mm -hmm. you guys can check out. This is going to be go. This is if you missed part of the show, you can go to the channel and you can watch. Watch it from the beginning. It'll be posted there once uh, we end the show. And then also I have uh, the record button still recording. And I'm going to take this episode, Dawn. It's going to go to Spotify. It's going to go to all the major platforms. All the cyber world. Exactly. So when I get that uploaded, I'll make sure to send that to you. And you can send it to... to any to anybody yeah they the chris, rest of my they cyber world that's right the rest of the cyber world that's right you're right chris they don't respect anything one thing about capitalism as a system it's an exploitive destructive system and it's really it's 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 really sad what's, well what's we happening. also have to remember how we utilize it too we fall right into the category as far as like utilizing our phones, utilizing the energy cars, utilizing what are we on right now? I mean, and what, it, how much water it takes to make lithium. Yep. And that those are our batteries. And what, where is that at? You know, so we have to be mindful of these things and, and how non connect, well, how disconnected we are from exactly what they're talking about the the no respect of the land or water or elements or biosphere all of these things you know and 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 yet how much are we contributing into that yeah no i th- i think about that a lot because and like i said it goes back to the system of capitalism it's mm-hmm. an exploitive system and you know we we pay the cost down the road the true cost and that's what i always tell a lot of my students because you know i'm a sociologist by trade that's what i do part of my full-time job is i'm a teacher and i teach sociology and there's something called externalities capitalism does not sell you the true cost of the things that we pay for whether it's our phone or a computer that it cost is pushed down the road to our ancestors to our mm-hmm. to the people to the generations to come all mm-hmm. the way down to the seventh generation because the true cost is so much more than what we're going to pay now. Mm-hmm. The, pollu- the pollution of the water, the pollution mm-hmm. of the air, those are the externalities that we don't pay for when we buy that new iPhone. And the mines, the destruction of the land that takes place to create these technologies, it's really incredible. And I do think about that often whenever I do buy an, a device and whatnot, I try to, to really think about my purchases in that way. And, you know, and how is too much. And how is it giving back? It'd be different if uh, they said, okay, we're going to give this part back to right. what we're destroying. And it, it's not happening. And then what about, you know, you brought up something as a good point is that, you know, how we utilize it, is, is it honoring the sacrifices that our people made, right? Yeah. And it's, it's not saying that, I mean, can we really go back? Do you really, are you really equipped to live a lifestyle off the land? That's right. If we can't even get off the couch or can't even get out of our own headspace. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I think you're you're making a really good point there. Um, I th- and this is one of the illusions of of this idea of rugged individualism, is because okay. people think they're so free. People think, mm-hmm. oh, I can do whatever it is I want to do, and I have freedom. And and people are so obsessed with their individuality. But let me tell you, the first moment their Wi-Fi died, right, or their electricity didn't work, or where they put the hot water on and it wasn't working, they would be on the phone calling for help. Mm-hmm. We are so helpless today. 
And oh my gosh, so Thank helpless you. in this modern world. And we have this delusional idea that we're just so free and we can just, you know, do what we want to do. I don't need anybody. And I think to myself, like, boy, we are truly fooling ourselves. Right. Really and then, on, you know, when we think about that, I always look at the room and I think, OK, everybody in this room. And I want you all to think about this out there in your room, in your space, in your environment. Look five to ten miles out. One, can you even walk five to ten miles out? Yeah. And back. Mm -hmm. So when we think about it from an ancestral mm -hmm. mindset, can you see do you know where to get your water? Do you know what plants, herbs and roots you're going to be able to eat? that you can can get food from what are your food sources do you know how to butcher or get a kill of game what is healthy to eat you know and how and to so you it. and how to prepare it and what's what does that look like and you know yeah. all the because we can utilize and say okay well if i had a gun or if i had you know we, we take all this out but and and think about that i mean because it's an elk that's huge. Like who's oh, going to carry it for you? A deer. Okay. Forget that. Let's just try the javelinas running around out here or a mm -hmm. rabbit or, you know, how, who guts it and all of that stuff. And, you know, how do you, how do you butcher something like that and gut it without it contaminating the rest of the meat? There's things like this that we don't ask ourselves. And I ask people like, and, and, and especially here is like, could you live out here? Ah. I probably could. It would be a whole world of a, you know, it, yeah. it'd be different. Yeah. 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 Gosh, that's such a good point. <laughs> I think about I'm that a just lot. Saying, just how we're, I mean, no, that's, a, that's very humbling. What you're talking about, I think is very, very humbling. And I think that's when, you know, um, I used to always hear growing up, like, uh, you know, you know, human beings are pitiful. We're a pitiful species. I didn't know really what, when the elders would say something like that, I didn't really know. What do you mean? What do you mean we're pitiful? Like, <laughs> like, because we're, we're kind of a helpless species. We can't run very fast. Some people can't even swim. You put them in water, they'll sink. Right. So <laughs> some people can't, they can't swim. We can't fly. Um, yeah. Uh, we, we, we can't run very fast. Um, you know, some of us can climb trees. Some people are can't, right? I mean, you look at, you know, the the animal world. They're so much more equipped than us. Look with how they can survive off the land, and look at us. We're just like, you know, we have these big brains, and we've been able to <laughs> create create this kind of synthetic world that's allowed us to survive. And it's taken us so far away from our primal selves, and yeah, it's very humbling. And it and I and I understand what that means. Like we are a very pitiful species because we destroy we destroy and we take so much without giving back so that we could have the things that we want that is kind of a pit pitiful way of living mm -hmm. and our ancestors so we, I think, did that in such a uh um uh, they did they lived with so much more grace and peace and reciprocity with with the land that they they occupied they and there's no reciprocity it. any longer um, they respected the world respect for everything everything honored everything. and they honored that the value of those parts of our lives that we take yes. for granted nowadays yeah you know i mean it was crazy because i went out to summer solstice a couple of years was it this last year or no it was a year before 2022 out to lakota and we had the honor of butchering a buffalo nice up until that point, I was only I've only butchered a sheep and a, a beef, a cow. And now I can say I've helped assist in butchering a buffalo. So it's pretty um, incredible. I, I I know I did my my video on the that's the last TikTok. I I, that's why I, I yeah, that that was I love I I enjoyed that was such a uh it was a hard video to make. It was really it's a difficult video to make, but um yeah, I just wanted to share a little bit about that history. And there's so much mm -hmm. more to that story, unfortunately, that's hard to get out. I mean, I in a short video, but um, you know, what was done to the you know, the bison, the destruction of the bison, um it was much more than just the destruction of a amazing, incredible species. It was the destruction of of like cultures. Mm-hmm. 
and that relied and had the sacred relationship with the bison. And, you know, there was this amazing connection that the bison had with the people, but not just with the people, with the land and how it changed the land itself, that the loss of, of the bison literally transformed the land. And these are things that the that Western science is just beginning to understand, just like the <laughs> devastation of the oh buffalo, the destruction of the wolves, and how that just destroyed ecosystems. That these these species are are um, so important to the health and wellness mm -hmm. of these ecosystems. And I just yes. find that to be so amazing because you know what, our ancestors already knew all this and didn't need somebody. <laughs> We had a lab coat on to tell us that this was true. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, that I'm, getting all worked, I'm getting all worked up now. <laughs> okay. Do some breathing. Go back to your breathing. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> We're all going to take a moment and breathe, everybody. That's, that's right. Yeah. So Chris yeah. is like, yeah, a lot of people can't even bait a fishing hook. <laughs> you know, saying. Chris, uh, a lot of people wouldn't even know how to tie the hook onto oh, a line. <laughs> Right. What kind of knot are you going to use? Yeah. You know? What kind of knot? Um, yeah. And, thank, thank God for YouTube, right? <laughs> YouTube right, University right, or right, Google right, University. Which I don't one? know how to do something. I just go to YouTube. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I YouTube, but I don't have the patience for that. Yeah. I don't have the patience for that. Like, someone just show me. And that's I was like, true. well, that's what the YouTube is for, Don. Yeah. So they'll show you. Yeah. I'm like, can we just skip the intro though? <laughs> get I to it. read directions. I just look at the picture. Is that that's what it's supposed to look like? <laughs> All right. If I can get it as close to that, then that's a success. <laughs> Thank you. Because I do the same thing. I'm like, just you know, yeah, I don't that's what use, it's supposed to look like. It. Yeah. I'm like, what's this? Show case me a picture missing? of what it's supposed to look Why like, is this and I'll case get it done. Missing? <laughs> You know, my, my, my cousin, he was really amazing. He was my, um, growing up, always had a, a, a beat up car, but I had a cousin who was a really good mechanic and we replaced my motor one time. We took it out. We had it, uh, rebuilt. And when he was taking the motor out, when we were, when we were taking it out together, he was just unscrewing everything. And he was, he had a, he had a, a bucket, like, no, he had a an old coffee can and he oh, just yeah. started throwing the bolts in the coffee can. This is no joke. And I remember thinking, uh, do you know what you're doing? Like, you're just going to throw them on there? And he's like, yeah. He's like, we'll just put them on the coffee can. We'll close it up. We get the motor. We're just going to take the bolts out and put them back on. And he goes, well, and I'm like, well, how are you going to know where bolt goes where? And he's like, well, it's in the coffee can, dude. It's like, I'm going to pour out <laughs> the coffee can. You know, if I put it somewhere else and they're going to get lost and like, it made complete sense to him. And I thought there's just no way, there's no way that this guy is going to be able to find all these bolts and know where they're going to go. So when we got the motor back, we had it rebuilt, oh, put no. it back in and literally he has the coffee can and he just like piece by piece. And it, he's joking and he's getting to, you know, he's like shaking the can. He's like, Hey, we're almost there, you know, cause there's, there's <laughs> only bolts left. And then he's like, this is how you know you did it right. When you when you look in the coffee, when you look in the coffee can, there's no more bolts left. <laughs> and I was like, sure enough, we got to the end. And he was able to build, put that motor back in. Wow. And and there was and then I remember concerned. starting, I'm like, it's no way it's gonna start. There's just no way it's gonna start. And, like, <laughs> no, it's not gonna start. and he said he and he was laughing. He's like, the look on your face when you're when we started your car, because I really believe I'm like, there's no way. But this is going to work. I, I would have been the same way. You know, yeah. my uncles were um, basically mechanics growing up. So, you know, their muscle cars were, it was their, was their, there's yeah. their playground and seeing them work on stuff like that. I'm like, and I'll be honest with you. I have no idea where I'm going with that story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, apparently it went from, you know, this has nothing to do with your wellness yeah. field, but hey, it's the mental thought process. <laughs> we're two hours in. It's the health and wellness in some way. <laughs> it's oh, that, yeah. you know, we're two hours in. We're, the wellness wheel is obviously <laughs> in the mental area. We're That's right. We're in the mental focus. state now. We're in the we're in the laughing state of the health and wellness <laughs> portion of uh, this health oh, and goodness. wellness Sunday. 
Um, oh, yeah, no, good laugh. Self care Sundays, you know. Yes, self care Sundays. I love that. So we're gonna do some more, obviously, more self care Sundays. I really enjoy this. What do y'all think? What do y'all? What do y'all? Yeah, think what do you guys there? think? I know we have. We're losing some people. Do you guys have people. any questions? Yeah, do you guys have? You know, there was a question. There was two. So I have. There's two. Uh, we have two questions. Two that we out of two hours. We had two questions. <laughs> there was like several others. I think we accidentally <laughs> skipped over. By the way, again, if you're just joining our live, or if you're just joining us here on on YouTube, we're we're over two hours into this discussion. <laughs> our self care Sunday. And having a great conversation about the wellness will, the, the pillars of wellness. And we're in the laughter portion of that. <laughs> um, so, but somebody had asked about, um, so this is great. You've all been sharing some of your physical wellness things. But what do you think, of course, uh, it affects mental health? What do you do to focus mainly on mental wellness? Is it art, literature, song? What? What is? So let's just start with you. What do you focus on? What's going to give you the most of, do the most for your mental health? What is it? For myself, I would have to say, you know, it's really the meditation part, but I don't, I'm, I don't think of meditation of like, okay, I'm going to sit and meditate on something. It's really just that space away and disconnecting from cyber world, the world, you know, and just reconnecting with myself. Um, it could be art. I'm not a real artist. Um, it could be, you know, for me, I like being in the kitchen and creating and food cooking. I also physically, I like to get out to my element of um, hiking you know, of activity. And I, I'm not trying to say competitive stuff. It's really a space where I can just be present with my elements. And so um, that's, that's really my space. What about, what about you, Dr. B? You know, for me, it's a few things. I, I, being outdoors is, a, is really important for me. The more I spend time outside, outside mm -hmm. of a building, you know, we're just so stuck indoors through our work. I, I really do um, envy my friend Joe because he live where he lives mm -hmm. and he works outside. Now, I make more money than Joe, <laughs> but, you know, Joe is outside all day in this amazing, beautiful environment. And he's you could tell when you see him, he is just one of the most well-balanced people and he's in such great shape. Um, just such a, a, a beautiful person, really great person. And, um, I just feel like for me, I know if I'm getting just a little bit grouchy or just not well mentally, just getting outside, mm -hmm. just getting out into the natural environment, whether it's taking a walk or even just kind of relaxing somewhere in the sun. I, I'm kind of like you, I don't, you know, I'm not going to wear sunscreen. I just like, you know, feeling the sun and that's, that's always very rejuvenating that would be one thing. And the second thing is, is working on my breath and working on breathing, just sitting mm -hmm. and doing that, that cadence of, of, you know, five, six seconds in mm -hmm. five and six seconds out, mm -hmm. just closing my mouth and just breathing through my nose and just focusing on my breath. And that's mm -hmm. always something that really helps my my mental state. And then, of course, the big thing is I train jujitsu. That's like the number, probably the number one thing. But if I couldn't train, if I didn't have jujitsu, or maybe I'm nursing an injury, can't train as hard. It's definitely just being outdoors, just being outside. Mm -hmm. I was outside today. I was doing some video, working on a video with a, a buddy of mine, and I'm going to be releasing soon here on um, on YouTube. And uh, we just walked. We just went for a walk mm -hmm. outside as we talked. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want, want to do the same with you. Go for a hike and and then talk and, and just, you know, have a conversation and, and have mm -hmm. some themes to talk about, obviously. But, yeah, just being outside, that, that does the trick for me. I felt so good. I was like, man, I feel so nice just to walk and just to be in good company. Yeah. Um it just that that's I think that's really uh, a great thing for mental health. And also, you know, we spend a lot. We talked about loneliness, having good friends and having good friendships. Mm -hmm. The jujitsu does that for me, too, because I'm around all these really cool people and we're laughing, joking, kind of like we're doing right now, mm -hmm. you know, spreading, spreading, you know, that good energy. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like, you know, because you have to fill your cup too, right? And those are the things, those are spaces. Like I said, yesterday was one of those days where I didn't do anything and I needed to fill my own cup, you know, kind of set some intentions and space for me. Um, I always go back to my healing medicines as well, you know, sitting with my space and cleaning out, you know, my my environment, my space and and just, you know, whether it's sage or cedar or I really go back to to my medicines as well. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's another good point. I didn't even think about. Yeah, just going back to your medicines. Uh, that's something that I do, especially if I'm really struggling. That's mm -hmm. probably the first thing I do. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I definitely miss that. Cause that's probably would be the first thing I do if I am having a really difficult time, like, you know, mentally just going straight to the medicine. Mm -hmm. That's like number one and then doing some of the other things after that, but that would be number one. Yeah. And I feel, you know, when I don't do that, my first, my first in the mornings, that's how I intentionally start my days. I, I you know, the day just messes, get some messed up stuff going on. I'm like, man, what did I miss, miss this morning? I was like, oh, oh, yeah. Then, yeah. then you find these different challenges coming, coming on board. And then you go and you clean up your space and you're good again. And it, I think it's finding, I was going to say in reference to that question, I think it's really about finding what works for you. Yeah. And that's, and that's in this whole wellness wheel. That's why I said it's really about the relationship we have with ourselves. Because these are just different ideas. These are different options, alternatives, because there's not a one size fits all. That's we're all facing on. something. We're all facing something different, traveling this life and this journey through life. Not in the same vehicle. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, you're right. There isn't a one size fits all method. It's going to work for everybody. You know, there's going to be some people that don't like training jiu-jitsu. There's going to be some people who aren't going to want want to run marathons. Uh, there's really something out there for everybody. You just have to find it. Mm -hmm. You have to find it. And once you find what works for you, you stick to it. And when you find it, it brings peace, not stress. Yeah. Because a lot of times people will be like, I go to the gym for my outlet, but then they stress out about getting to the gym. Or they mm -hmm. stress out because they miss the gym. No, it's supposed to bring you that peace. And that yeah. peace brings that mental clarity, that yeah. mental calmness, you know. And, um, you know, again, I go back to the gut health and, and what are we eating? What are we putting inside our bodies too? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you want to, I mean, I know for me, and that's a good point too. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I didn't even think about that. I think when I'm not feeling very well, or maybe I'm a little bit low, Man, I go straight to my diet. Okay, what am I eating? Mm -hmm. I go straight to my diet. Okay, I need to start maybe, you know, incorporating a little bit more healthy fats into my diet. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe extending my fast a little bit longer, drinking more water, making sure I'm hydrated. That's another good point because I do do that. Whenever I do feel a little bit low mm -hmm. mentally or psychologically, I, I do also look at my diet. And, and you're right. It's not, it's not just one thing. There's, there's multiple things that, you know, it's like, are we doing a checklist? What's a checklist, your checklist, like right? What is your checklist? Are you checking in with yourself when you're oh having, God. I'm filling up my water cup. When you're feeling, when you're feeling a headache, what are you, what are you, what, what, what's the headache? Problem? Are you drinking your water yet? Right. Yeah. How much water do you have for today? You know, that's one of the biggest things. Or did you breathe today? Are you holding your breath through life today? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I know like the breathing, that's such a big thing for me. So there, there is a checklist, I guess. So maybe that's something that we can encourage everybody to do. Like have a checklist of all the things that make you feel good. What what are mm -hmm. those things? Are, are you things not that you doing, should be doing Drinking, making sure you're hydrated, making mm -hmm. sure you're working on your breath, you know, just sitting and breathing, going right. for a walk, mm -hmm. incorporating your medicines into your daily routine. Uh, making sure you're getting good sleep, mm -hmm. finding I that, mean, that thing that you enjoy doing that makes you feel good, whether it's hiking, like you like to do, or jujitsu, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's options, right? I mean, just so many options that there are out there. Just finding what fits for you. Yeah. And as long as it brings peace for you. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's a good place to to end our show. We're not done with self care Sundays. Sorry, sorry, Don, you're you're stuck now. <laughs> I have. I don't, okay. Well, here we are, 7 p.m. Arizona time. Don't ask me at other time zones because we don't, don't do those. Don't be scheduling anything in your, into our, our health. How you doing, Charlotte? Good to see you. Um, but, uh, but yeah. I haven't seen anything so going good. on, so I don't even know if I'm still on on that side. Uh, you are. You are. You're still on. Okay. <laughs> you're on. You're here on YouTube. You're there. <laughs> my, my record button is still going. Oh, so, man, this, this, has been, this has been really um, a really great discussion. I appreciate um, appreciate you taking the time. Obviously, a lot of this is a lot of time. And I, we were talking about that before before we went on the air. We were talking about you know our time, making sure that we're doing things with our time that we want to do, and. Mm -hmm. And this is good because these are all really good, such good reminders for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm a really busy person, always on the go. And all these reminders that that you have been, you know, encouraging us to think about are just so good for me too. Just so you I have know. a question. Yeah. I have a question, everybody. Everybody that's so busy, because yes. I know I'm busy. I, I say, are we busy productive? Or are we busy just trying to pass time by? Because we don't sit with ourselves enough. That's a good, that's a good question. Yeah. Are we just filling that time? Because we feel like we should be busy. Yeah. Or have we really sat with ourselves? Because again, I said I was going to talk about our wellness wheel and everything, but it's a relationship with ourselves. Do you really know yourself well enough to go, can I just sit with myself? Yeah. And be still. It's a good point. I like that. And that's where my breathing comes into play. Where mm -hmm. I can just sit for a moment in solitude and just focus on my breathing. Mm -hmm. I, you know, whether it's, I did it today, went outside and, you know, I just was um, focusing, sitting, focusing on my breathing. And that really helps us get out of this, this path, this, this, pause, you know, pause here, focus on our breath, right? And then kind of go back and go, okay, now I can think clearly about what it is that I was trying to get done. Right. Oh. And, and, and focusing on that. Um, you know, today we had a team, a team meeting today, sun, Sundays, the girls come over and my team and we we're, we we're going over things and we ended up dancing in the kitchen, lip syncing to songs. <laughs> that you know that was our outlet i was like okay what other company can you go to and this is what your team meeting that's, looks like that's awesome man you know, i wish i had it, that kind of team meeting it was like laughter and it was fun and we were giggling and you know just but that's the parts of ourselves that we forget to reconnect with so yeah. what is your relationship with yourself can you so, be can you be childlike not meaning immature but have fun you know have yeah. fun because life is meant to be lived and happy uh, true gosh like you said that earlier that's true and like you said you know that's you had said not taking things for granted that's a big one for me not taking anything for granted all these amazing things that i have in my life and my gym my motorcycle club, all my friendships, moments like this, my family, mm -hmm. none of that. I don't take anything for granted. And, you know, there's right. an expiration date, right? The circle is complete at some point in time. And that's what I, like taking things for granted. More recently, I've been spending time with, you know, especially my parents and in their language, you know, my mom was always like, you know, she, we, 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 you always ask an elder to give the offering and the blessing of prayer, you know. She's like, me again? I was like, yes, because that's music to my soul. Listening to her in our language and providing blessings, it's like, oh, you know. And the one of the biggest gifts I received last year was when she helped me with my prayer at the um, Arizona Code Talker Day. And nice. I gave the closing prayer in our Apache language. And it was like, that was one of the 
most beautiful gifts I could receive from her. And so those kinds of things are also like what reconnects me, you know, and uh, this this person over here said, Austin says, you know, about music, I will let like in Spotify, I have different genres, right? And it depends on what my spirit is feeling. Sometimes I'll let it lead and go back to my traditional songs, my cultural ceremonial songs, whether they're Apache or, you know, shared with another from another relative. Or oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. So it's just, you know, it's 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 variety of stuff of things. Yeah. Well, well hi to, who's Juan? Don? Yeah. Is there a question? Got a question, Crow Feather? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, these are things of our wellness wheel that we just again, what's your relationship with yourself? And are you No. Well, Dawn, Dawn is uh, Danae Only in San Carlos what? Apache. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Danae, uh, sixth generation to Chief Mangalito, half San Carlos Apache, in there, you know, in there, as is who I am, an Apache woman. And, um, you know, I, I was born and raised in on the Navajo Nation. And was also raised in uh, San Carlos as well, you know, and got my teachings from my my grandparents and my parents and my aunts and my uncles and, you know, the whole community, the whole tribe, you know. Two beautiful areas. Two absolutely uh, beautiful areas. Absolutely. Well, you all, we're going to sign off. We'll sign off first on TikTok. All right. We're going to start there to our folks on TikTok. Thank you so much for um joining um our live event tonight man it was really good energy usually we know um mel is at work blocking people you know, <laughs> I, I, think, I think the reason why she hasn't had to work her fingers is because we have you on don and not me i'm not doing all the talking i think maybe <laughs> who knows what i'd be saying right now but um <laughs> thank you sister thank you mickey, mickey thank you relatives thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Mel. You all are amazing. Yeah. You know, I appreciate you so Mel. much, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. she's like 20 hours somewhere else. Yeah. In uh, Aotearoa, um, mm -hmm. New Zealand. Thank yes. you, Mel. Beautiful, the beautiful. Best, Mel. Mel, that's where I got oh, my. Uh, humble. Oh, shit. I'm, I'm getting know. ready. I'm getting ready for my, my competitive hike that I'm going to be doing here real soon. I'll be working my. Is my that, endurance is that is that what we do for a competitive hike <laughs> exercises i don't know what this is <laughs> i know it's okay. not going to help me with my hiking but you know what is going to help don't me be my, scared my don't breathing be scared. oh don't no scared. i'm not I'm scared I, I have this competitive streak in me I'm just getting... don't trip and fall oh gosh dawn i <laughs> i'll be all right i am wow <laughs> Competitive hiking, Mel. Where did this come from, anyway? <laughs> Competitive hiking is the new sport. Yes, it it's is. It's a new thing. Yeah, and I promise you all, if you're watching this on TikTok, you know anything about what we're talking about here. Uh, my legs will not be locking up on this this hike. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Jeremiah. so what what he doesn't know is we're gonna go hiking in July, everybody. Oh, out here in July. <sighs> The hottest time of the year? <laughs> really? <laughs> hey. so I, have, I don't either, Mel. I don't have any idea where they come from. So. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I won't take no, you out like that. You guys I'll, are. I won't take you out like that. I'll, 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 I'll let you live. <laughs> let me live. <laughs> well, You'll be all right. No, You'll I'll, be all right. I'll, I'll be all right. I'll be good. I'll I be mean, good. you know. Just, you know. Hey, if I feel like if I can't ha hack it, you know, I'll just fake an injury. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh my goodness! I'll just my I'll ankle. Like... I, I twisted my ankle at jujitsu. <laughs> I can't get inside today. <laughs> no, it's messed Let's up. Just I'll go find like... a nice little vista and have a conversation. <laughs> 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 be like here you go you know that's where we're at today you know we didn't oh, feel like hiking we didn't go very far 
I know now I can't now I can't even talk about my injuries now. I was just making fun, making a joke. And I do have these little injuries too. I got, you know, I got little bumps and bruises. Now I can't even use those as, as excuses. <laughs> well, I mean, I have an injured foot. Uh, you got well, there you go. Start. So we're, you we're, got a head start. Though. Well, not anymore. I'm like 5% injured. Okay. Well, yeah, I always say, I always tell people, I'm like, when people say, Hey, how, how you feeling? I'm like, well, not, about 95%. <laughs> There's always a 5% that, you know, gee, let's see. Here. <laughs> I love it. Look at these pre elders. <laughs> we're elders in training. Okay. Elders in training. Here. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, um, yeah, no, I, st I, I, um, you know, that's the, the, that's the, that's the whole healing part of it. Right. Mel is the, the, that's laughter for the soul, the spirit, right? That's right. <laughs> elders, elders in training. Okay. Wait, when is your birth date? So July 3rd. Yes. You're my elder. Am I your elder? I guess I have to be nice, huh? Yeah. That means I guess I have to be, have to be <laughs> nice. You have to start stop clowning me now. <laughs> Don't be Pick your elders. <laughs> you pull the elder card. <laughs> you pull in the elder card. Oh, oh okay, my gosh. Dang. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> elders in training over here. This is oh, boy. Kind of active. I like that, though. I like that elders in training. I do, too. Not a chance. <laughs> Not <Nikki>. a chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, too, um, have you ever gone snowboarding? You know, I haven't been snowboarding in probably... I don't know. It's been 30 years. What? Yes. Yeah. 30 years since I've been snowboarding. Hmm. But you know, I skated. I, I I skated for a lot of years. I feel like if I were to get on a snowboard, I think I'd be just fine. I okay. was pretty good on a snowboard. But you know, it was <gasps> one of those like I felt like it was too little bit too bourgeois for me. Snowboarding and skiing. <laughs> excuse me okay i was a little too bourgeois so i gave it up but no i i loved when i used to snowboard i loved it i skied as a kid um because i lived near i lived i grew up near a ski resort and so i used to, do, <laughs> used to ditch school and go skiing <laughs> directed over there elders in training <laughs> mel you should make a hiking t-shirt elders in training <laughs> you know what Man, I bet you that would sell. It should be a movie, Elders in Training. <laughs> Elders in Training. <laughs> Elders in Training Part Two. <laughs> the sequel. <laughs> oh my goodness. And what did Andy say over here? I'm gonna start pulling that card with my younger siblings. <laughs> yes. Yes. You, you know, the thing about it is I don't have anybody to pull that card with. I know you're the youngest. I'm the youngest of my family, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. oh well, I'm pulling it here with you. <laughs> man you gotta let me win now <laughs> okay okay i could let you win you're gonna have to earn it though you're gonna have oh, to earn yeah. it though i don't even like the sound of that let exactly me no. you said it no you said it no like, way i take it now back. now you're gonna back. always think is she just letting me win i take exactly no i take it back now i want your, you can't. I want your best your best you effort uh-uh. Well, yeah, I'm giving you my best effort. <laughs> no, feel free to like, you know, push me as hard as hard as you can. And um, you know, feel free to, to test me. Uphill or just be like, are you are you are just you keep going? Up? If I hey, if I can't keep up, I can't keep up. Just keep going. Just like he'll be all right. Just like lost. Joe. And then just like Joe left it behind. And what's that? And then lost in the desert. Oh god. Never mind. Don't get out of play. <laughs> See? <laughs> oh my oh goodness. My goodness. Elders, Elders in training in the training. next season of Reservoir. <laughs> <laughs> Reservation dog. Re Reservoir. Gosh, I'm getting tired. Reservation dogs. Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay, y'all. Yeah. TikTok, thank you. You guys are great. <laughs> Good night. Love you all. Good night. Sweet, sweet dreams. Love you. All right, so we're going to end the podcast now. Thank you for checking out um, this episode. Two and a half hours long. This has been this has been cool. I think this is our, 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 that's the duration. Yeah, because we did about this much time last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. All right, y'all. So I'm going to turn off my podcast machine. This has been the Seven Generation Podcast. Here's is Doctor B. Thank you, Don. Stay on. Don't go anywhere just yet. Stay oh, on. Okay. <laughs> oh, um, okay. And we'll be back again one of these times. I will uh, make sure that we get Don back on uh, the podcast. But for sure, um, we're going to do uh, some more live events on TikTok. But I really enjoy this platform here. That way, we can up get this uploaded to. Um, to Spotify and all the major platforms. Thank all right. You. Thank you for having me. Yeah, a absolutely. All right. So I, I finished that up. So it um, says live. Yeah, we're still live on YouTube. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stop. Are we really? We are. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Are we really? Jeez, we're pulling an all nighter YouTube. <laughs> YouTube well, marathon do, like, over here. Fundraiser one of these times, like fundraise for something and do like all oh, night, oh. like live event or something. No, seriously, we're doing. We're gonna in April. We're getting our team together for the Marine Corps marathon, and we're actually going to um, raise funds for that. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. be cool. We're, do we're doing that. We're doing that for yeah. We always start in April. Very cool. All right, y'all. So. <laughs> Good night. We're going to sign out here on YouTube now. Don't go anywhere, Don. I appreciate you, though. Everybody here, stick out. out. You guys are the best. <laughs> All right. Love and light, everyone.